Hey how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we are gonna see, what if Naruto fall in love with Sailor Moon. This is part 2, and before getting into video. I request you to check the author of this fanfic, and show some love and support. Name of the story is. The 4th Dejutsu by, Historian of the Kaiser, do check it out. All details in description. And if you want next part of this series. Please leave a like share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. It's been a day since Naruto found the girl and she was still unconscious. He contemplated if he should tell Chibiusa or not when she came over for training, and decided it would be a good idea if he did. Naruto knew if he didn't tell her and the unknown girl wakes up from her coma, then he would be in some serious trouble. He shook his head as he tried to figure out what to do with the unconscious girl, as placed a wet piece of cloth on her forehead. Looking at the clock in his room he realized that Chibiusa would be arriving soon for training. Not wanting to leave the girl alone he made a single Kage bunshin and left it with the sleeping girl while he went to the training grounds to wait for Chibiusa. I have a feeling today's going to be a long day Naruto thought as he made his ways to his training grounds. Unknown girl. The girl groggily sat up as she surveyed her surroundings she was surrounded by nothing but darkness. She didn't understand why, but she heard someone calling her name, so she followed the voice. The girl walked slowly in the darkness, hoping to get to where the voice was at, but didn't seem to be getting any closer. She almost gave up hope of finding the voice until she heard her name being called again. Otto, hurry we don't have much time, the voice called out from the darkness. She ran so she could reach the voice, but found that the black void to be endless. She couldn't hear the voice anymore so Hadaru stopped running. She looked around the void hoping to find the voice that had called her earlier, but only found darkness. Where am I? Hadaru said as she continued to look around the black void until stars began to appear, and she found herself looking at planet Earth. She stared in amazement as she looked at it from high up in space. Beautiful isn't it, said a voice from behind her. Quickly turning around she sees something that shocks her even further. A girl who could be called her twin had on a purple and maroon sailor fuku with a pair of purple boots on with a glaive in her hand. Hotter stares warily at the girl and manages to speak to her. Who are you? And where am I? Her twin looks at her and smiles a sad but gentle smile. I am Sailor Saturn and we are in your mind, this shocked Hotter because she believed that there was only five Sailor Senshi not six Sailor Senshi. If that's true then why are you in my mind? Hotter asked trying to keep her cool, while trying to keep the nervousness out of her voice. I will tell you, while we're walking to our destination, Saturn said as she walked to the direction of planet Saturn. Hotaru followed close behind the Senshi of Destruction as she walked away from Earth. Hotaru waited patiently for the Senshi to speak, not that she didn't mind the silence, to her it was relaxing, and a change from the life she had to live with her father and the evil red-haired woman. The silence was broken when Saturn spoke up. As I said before we are in your mind, but some would call it your mindscape. I live inside of you along with one other. As Sailor Saturn, I am the bringer of death and destruction. I was put into a deep sleep by the Sailor Senshi known as the Outer Senshi. These Senshi consist of Sailor Uranus, Sailor Neptune, and Sailor Pluto. They have two purposes, to prevent my awaking and to guard the outer solar system from any threats. Sailor Pluto also had one more purpose, and that was to guard the gates of time, but that's not important at the moment, Saturn said softly as she led Hotter to a large hazy yellow planet with a large ring around it. Above the planet were two large purple crystals with two people inside them. The crystal on the left had a woman in it with long black hair with purple highlights in them. Her eyes were shut and she appeared to be sleeping. She wore a long blue dress that hugged her body showing off her curves. She gave off an aura of pure malice and rage. Hotter shut her slightly as another crack appeared in her crystal letting off more of her dark aura. She turned her attention to the crystal on the right only to see Sailor Saturn with it. Her crystal had more cracks than the other crystal and she gave off a dark aura, but she didn't feel necessarily evil or necessarily good. She felt right in the middle of the two, and when another crack appeared in the crystal she shuddered again, but not because of an evil feeling, but because she felt more complete when it happened. Hadaru turned toward Saturn, hoping she would explain this, and luckily for her she did. Hadaru, these two crystals you see are the two beings that you will someday become. The one on the left is an evil being called Mistress Nine. She was allowed to pause your body when you were killed in a freak accident in your father's lab. He was also pauses by what I do not know nor do I care. This being is in league with an evil creature named Pharaoh 90, and they are in an organization known as the Death Busters. Their goal is to gather pure hearts to reawaken Mistress 9 and to gain the Holy Grail, she explained calmly, while never taking her eyes off the two crystals. Hadaru stared on with her, but with an impassive face on the outside. On the inside she was a wreck and couldn't believe what she was hearing from the Senshi. Wait if what you say is true about Mistress 9 being asleep. Why is it that I sometimes feel a dark presence wash over my body before I black out? 
And if I'm right, that dark presence is Mistress Nine, correct? Hotaru asked quietly with fear clear in her voice. Saturn turned her gaze from the crystals to Hotaru's fearful eyes. Saturn's features softened a little before she spoke to the scared girl. You're correct, Hotaru. The dark presence you felt before you passed out was Mistress Nine. The cracks in the crystals will allow her or me to give you some of our power or have temporary control over your body. Mistress Nine has taken temporary control over your body numerous times to make plans with your father know that Poss is being. To put it bluntly she wants to be revived by the power of the pure hearts you pitiful humans seem to carry. When she is revived she will bring a horror known as Pharaoh 90 to this planet and completely destroy it with along with the entire universe, she said softly with little warmth in her words. Hot Air stared at the senshi with wide eyes, not believing that such an evil creature was living inside her, but she knew what Sailor Saturn said was true, because she always felt dark urges within her body from time to time. So what can I do to prevent this from happening? She asked softly while turning her attention to the crystal that held Saturn. The crystal had more cracks going through it, and she felt herself shudder once again. There are only two options that you can choose to do, Saturn said as she placed her silence glaive on her back, while turning to face the girl who still had fear written all over her body with little hope shining through. The first is to let Mistress Nine take complete control over your body, she paused when she sat the girl's face go pale, she was about to question her when Saturn held up her hand to stop her from speaking. Don't speak, listen, and then ask questions, she said softly with a hint of irritation in her voice, before placing her hand back to her side. Your second option is that I give you small amounts of my power over time, so when I fully awaken your body won't overload with my power, and you end up killing yourself in the end. But even if you die, you will be reborn soon after. The problem is even if you take the second option Mistress Nine will still be born, and you have to be prepared to fight her when the time comes, Sailor Saturn told the shellshock girl. Why do I have to fight her? Couldn't the other senshi fight her? She asked in a timid voice while staring at the nearby planets that seemed to be covered in a dark shadow. She turns her head to look at the direction of Earth. She remembers that only the Earth and Moon were the only planets that weren't covered in shadows. Sorry hot air. But the others may not trust you, and I'm not going to take any chances with them, even though you have the power to wipe them out of existence. The senshi may not be able to help, but I believe the boy who saved you may. He holds incredible power, and I feel no ill intent coming from him, but be cautious of him, because I also sense a great evil within him, Saturn explained with a small smile on her lips. Hotter looked at her with confusion on her face before realization dawned on her. She remembered the concerned blue eyes that stared into hers moments before she fell unconscious. I don't know what I want, but I do believe that the boy who saved me wouldn't hurt me, Hotter paused in her explanation when she saw the look Saturn was giving her, which clearly read and what makes you think that, so she explained her reasoning. The reason why I believe that he wouldn't harm me is because of the look in his eyes. They held no malice, lies, or any hidden objective when he saved me, they held only concern for my well-being, Hotter reasoned softly as she stared at Sailor, Saturn's blank face before she let a small smile appear on her face. Very well Hotter. But know this, you will receive my powers whether you like it or not, because we are one in the same. Now it is time for you to leave Hotter, Saturn said as she raised her silence glaive in the air, as it began to crackle with purple energy. Saturn gave Hotter a small smile and spoke before the girl left her mind. Know this Hotaru, I will always be here and if you're ever in trouble whisper my name, she said as a purple flash appeared out of her weapon, and when the flash died down, Hotaru was gone. Saturn looks back at her crystal before she slowly faded into nothing. But Naruto and Chibiusa. Then more punches Chibiusa, and if you can't do that then I will be forced to double your weights, Naruto demanded from his student as he watched as she slowly continued to punch the log with her gloved hand. Blood was slowly leaking through the many rips in her new gloves. She frowned at that because she really liked the gloves, but continued to punch the log with the last of her remaining strength. She mentally counted down how many hits she had left and hoped she wouldn't pass out. 291 292 293 294 295 296 297 298 299 300 She finished with a smile on her face as she fell down on the ground face first. Naruto slowly walked up to her and expected her. She was still conscious and was currently glaring at her sensei with a smirk on her face. Naruto smiled back at her, but his smile made a shiver run down Chibiusa's spine. His smile clearly read these words that made her shudder once again, the torture has just begun yes, she now knew to never try to blackmail him again. Naruto was about to heal her hands when he felt a presence behind him. He turned around only to see the girl her carried to his house. She was dressed in a new purple sweater that Naruto had bought for Ino, but figured that she could use it. With it she had on slightly baggy black pants with a pair of black shoes. Once Hotaru saw Chibiusa's injured hand she rushed over to her and placed her hands over hers. 
Slowly hot her hands began to glow a dark purple, and Shibuya's hands began to heal right in front of hers and Naruto's eyes. Naruto blinked in surprise and in shock when he watched some girl heal the wounds with a strange power he never saw before, but felt strangely familiar to him. He decided to ask Kyuubi about what he thought about this. Verbal, what's this power I'm feeling from this girl? It feels the same as the one those sailor senshi use, but a little darker, QB said ignoring the furball comment. What do you mean by a little darker QB? It's exactly what I said. Her power is darker than the others, but it hasn't quite awakened yet. So you're saying that she has an evil power, and it hasn't awaked yet? No, you blonde idiot. Just because something is dark doesn't necessarily mean that it's evil. The girl's power is just darker than the other senshi girls. But I do sense two presences within her. One is very dark, but not evil and is very powerful. The other is dark, evil, and powerful. Idiot keep a close eye on this girl, she could either destroy this miserable planet or save it. Which one I don't really care, because I get to see a good show nonetheless, QP said with an evil chuckle. Naruto mentally rolled his eyes and had to ask one lat question to the giant talking ball of fur before cutting the connection. QP, there's one more thing I have to ask you. What is it now flesh bag? Why is it that her power feels so familiar to me? QB was silent for a few minutes because he wondered should he tell the boy what he found or not. He decided that it would be best if he found out on his own, so he told a slight lie, since not even he could look into the boy's past memories. I have no answer for that Gaki. Just know that your answers will come to you in time. Now leave me alone so I can sleep, the fox yawed loudly, which sounded like a roar to Naruto before the connection was cut. He turned his attention back to the two girls, whom seemed to be staring at him in concern. Sensei, are you alright? You've been staring out into space for the past five minutes, Chibiusa said sitting on the gourd with her legs crossed. Hotter stood up a few feet away from Chibiusa and was also looking at Naruto with confusion. Naruto stared at the strange girl before turning her attention back to Chibiusa. I'm fine Chibiusa. Just thinking about something, he said with a sheepish smile while scratching the back of his head. Chibiusa nodded her head at him but didn't quite believe his lie, so she dropped it for now. Hotter walked up to Naruto and gave him a short bow before talking to him. Thank you for saving me. My name is Tomo Hadaru and it's a pleasure to meet you, she trailed off because she didn't know his name. Naruto saw her dilemma and chuckled slightly before also introducing himself. Uzumaki Naruto, it's a pleasure to meet you as well Hadaru, he said also giving her a small bow. He turned his attention back to Chibiusa before giving her a sadistic smile. She felt a chill go through her and she didn't like it one bit. Chibiusa while I talk to Hadaru, I want you to kick the log 300 times with each leg. Once you're done I'll teach you how to draw on your chakra, and when you learn how to do that the real training will begin," he said with a slight evil laugh that sent chills through both girls. Gibiusa slowly got to her feet and walked back to the log, while muttering about evil sadistic blonde bastards unfortunate for her Naruto herder. Gibiusa make those 400 kicks on the log and an extra 5 pounds to your weights, he shouted out to her, which made her slump her shoulders and cry silent tears of misery. Naruto walked up to her leaving a puzzled Haderu behind. He placed his hands over her wristbands and focused a little of QB's chakra through them. Increase weights by 5 pounds he focused as her wristbands glowed a bright red. He repeated this action with her ankle bands as well and told her to continue her training. She mumbled a quiet yes and say and proceeded to kick the log while Naruto took Hadaru into his house. With Naruto and Hadaru. Hadaru sat quietly on the couch waiting for Naruto to return with the tea he said that he would bring for them. She couldn't believe what she had saw between him and the girl named Chibiusa. When she had saw the girl's bloody hand she hurried over to her and healed them up. She didn't know what caused her hands to get so bloody, but after she heard what Naruto ordered her to do she now knew why. She didn't know how that girl could do an exercise like that because she knew that any normal person would be in the hospital after doing the things she did. Hader didn't know whether to ask for help from Naruto or not because he seemed a little deranged in her opinion. She was soon brought away from her thoughts as Naruto walked into the room carrying in the tea. He placed Hadaru's cup in front of her, and he sat in a chair across from her with his cup in one hand and a scroll in another. He took a few sips from his tea, which she did also, and after about five minutes, Naruto decided to find out what was going on with her. Hadaru, what exactly happened to you? It's something I would not like to speak about at the moment, she said quietly. Naruto nodded his head and decided to ask something else. Do you have a place to stay? Hadaru stiffed slightly and thought about his question. She had a home, but it wasn't safe for her, and here was some guy who she didn't even know was going to offer her residence. Hadaru closed her eyes and shook her head no. Well you could stay here, that is if you want to. He said as he placed his tea down on the table and stared into Hadaru's purple eyes before he stood up. You don't have to answer now, but you can stay here tonight since you have no place to go. 
If you need me, I'll be out in the back toward I mean training Chibiusa-chan, he said as he walked off out to his training grounds, leaving Hotter to think about her answer. What should I do? Stay here with him, said a calm voice form within Hotter's mind. Who's there? She said quietly and a little nervously. I do believe we have met earlier Hotter. Saturn is that you? Yes it is. Now speak to me through your thoughts so people won't think you're going crazy or the wrong people hear you and kill you. Okay, how is this? That is very good Hotter Saturn said as she began walking away from Saturn and towards the direction of Earth. Like I have said before, it would be in your best interest to stay. He will be able to protect you from anything you won't be able to handle, and he will most likely train you, like he is doing the pink-haired girl, she said slowly walking to the Earth's moon. I'll have to think about it, and while I'm thinking, would you mind telling me how you're speaking to me like this? When you healed the girl with pink hair, Saturn said in monotone as she gazed upon the moon. Hotter was confused by what Saturn meant and was about to voice it, but the senshi continued before she could. The healing power you used was actually my power. When you used it, it formed more cracks into my crystal and enabled me to talk to you like this. But a few other things as well, Hotter nodded her head to herself and asked what the other things were, so Saturn continued her explanation. For starters it allowed you to take on more of my power and it is steadily merging with you at a faster rate. I advise you not to heal people too often, because if my power merges with you too quickly you will die, along with everyone else on this miserable blue planet. If you want to prevent that from happening do not use our healing power again. The other thing that it allowed me to do is to take brief control over your body if the time calls for it. Though I won't do it unless necessary because you are currently not strong enough to handle my power and the threats that oppose you. If I were to take control over you, the outer senshi would know immediately and will do everything in their power to destroy us. And that is not something I want to happen, though they would have difficulty destroying us with our power. There is one last thing that this had allowed me to give you as of now. It allowed me to give you a weapon of my choosing that is closely related to my silence glaive. I will give you a scythe that is infused with my power, and you will be able to call on it just say the name Death Scythe, and it will come to you. Just know this hot air, the longer you use the Death Scythe the weaker you become. The Death Scythe draws on you energy and will make you weaker in time. You can always regain you energy back with a good rest, but if you use it for too long you will die, Saturn explained, and Hot Air nodded wordlessly. Hot Air understood what Saturn was saying, and she knew this power could help her in her time of need. But using her power would come at a great cost, and she knew that she would have to use it sparingly. So if I become strong enough, I should be able to handle your power without much consequence. And if I live with Naruto-san and get him to train me, I will be able to handle any threat that comes my way. Thus meaning that I will be able to handle Mistress Nine when the time comes, but I don't think I will be able to handle it she thought with a frown on her face. Don't worry about it Hotaru. Just believe in yourself and everything will be fine. Now go and talk to Naruto about your decision, Saturn said as she cut her connection with Hotaru. Hotaru sat there on the couch for a few minutes before she silently got up and walked back out to the training grounds. With Emerald. Damn where is that little brat at, she growled as she jumped to another building. She's been searching for Chibiusa for hours, and she hasn't got any closer to finding the brat yet. Emerald cursed under her breath as she jumped into an empty alleyway. She looked down to her clothing and knew that she wouldn't blend in with the humans, but she didn't care the only thing that mattered was capturing the moon brat. She walked down the street not sensing the moon brat anywhere, so she walked in the direction of the park where she had encountered her at the day before. As she enters the park she senses something that almost rivaled her own dark energy. Curiosity getting the best of her she ventured over to where she sensed the energy at. She arrived where she had fought the sailor senshi the day before, only to see a woman with red hair expecting the area. The woman stopped her searching and turned towards Emerald narrowing her grey eyes. Who are you? With Makoto. I have to spar with him again Makoto thought as she opened up her oven and pulled out a cooking sheet with cupcakes in them. She's been thinking for the past few days over her defeat to Naruto and how it seems so familiar to her. Makoto remembered what happened after her and the others had left his house. Flashback. The girls were all walking down the street chatting about how Naruto could live in such a place by himself when Ami said something that brought all the attention towards her. Girls about Makoto's planet symbol. Hmm, what about it Ami-chan, Makoto said looking towards Ami in confusion. She looked towards the other girls to see that they all had serious expressions on their faces and even Yasagi had one on and this made Makoto blink a few times in confusion. What are you talking about? During your fight with Naruto San it appeared and it was shining brightly, I'm surprised you couldn't tell, Rei said as she stared at her friend intently. What exactly were you feeling when you were fighting him? Makoto stopped in her tracks and sat down on a nearby bench and leaned her head back, so she was staring into the sky. It's complicated. I felt a rush I have never felt before in my life. 
It was such an overwhelming feeling and it only increased when we were sparring with each other. Every time he landed a hit on me, it felt like I had to push myself a little more so he wouldn't. For some unknown reason I had a sense of formality when I was fighting with him. It felt like I had done it once before with him or something close to it. Some of the moves I pulled on him were moves I have never done before and it felt like I was doing it out of memory. I think Imeishi was interrupted by Ami. Have a connection to the Silver Millennium, the others looked at the two in shock and Usagi spoke up next, who have been oddly silent since they have left Naruto's place. I completely agree with the two of you. I feel like I have known him my entire life, but yet I don't. We should talk to Luna and Artemis about this, she said as she made her way towards the shrine. The others followed after her, wanting to get some answers as well. Then flashback. But even they didn't have the answers we wanted on him, she said under her breath as she finished decorating her cupcakes with orange and green frosting. She placed them in a plastic container and then placed that in a bag where she had previously had placed some chocolate chip cookies in. She was planning on going to Naruto's house and challenge him to another spar, but this time she was determined to whine. She baked the cookies and cupcakes for them to eat after their spar, and she secretly hoped that she would get to know more about him. Makoto silently sighed to herself as she walked to her door. She wore a dark green sweater with black pants and a pair of black shoes. She carried a bag over shoulders that were filled with her training clothes and some training shoes. In her hand was the bag filled of deserts, and she put on a determined face. This time I will win she thought as she opened her door and came face to face with a smiling Yasagi. She stopped in her tracks and stared blankly at Yasagi for a few seconds before saying the first question that came to mind. What the hell are you doing at my front door Yasagi? Yasagi looked at Makoto a little hurt before covering it up with a big sheepish smile as she rubbed the back of her head. Eh <laughs> well you see I was heading to Naruto's place when I got a little lost, she said with a nervous laugh. Why do you need to go there? Because I want to find out why he seems so familiar to me, she said seriously, surprising Makoto because she never seen Yasagi look so serious. Fine I'll show you only because I was just heading there myself, she said as she closed and locked her door. Yusagi smiled brightly at her friend, and then a sudden thought hit her, and a sly smile made its way on her face. Why were you heading for Naruto-san house Makoto-chan? She said with her smile never leaving her lips. Makoto caught Yusagi's smile, and a slight blush appeared on her face. I'm just going to challenge him to another spar Yusagi-chan, she said a little nervously. Yusagi smiled a knowing smile, and suddenly a smell made its way to her nose, making her smile widen. And you're going to be sparring with chocolate chip cookies and cupcakes, she said with a slight trail of drool forming at the corners of her mouth. She will share those with me will she? She thought as her mouth began to water before she heard a cough. She looked up at Makoto to see her smiling at her, and as is if reading her mind she answers her question. Isagi you could have some, but only if you stop with the Naruto business, she said with a warm smile. Yusagi smiled back as they both talked to one another as they made their way to Naruto's house. With Naruto. Okay Chibiusa it's time for the next step of your training, Chibiusa cheered because she finally get to move on to something else. Naruto watched this with a small mischievous smile, and Hot Air watched all of this from his patio. She didn't like that smile, it made her nervous and slightly scared. So are we finally going to spar sensei? She asked with excitement clear in her voice. No, he said making Chibiusa stare up at him in confusion. She saw as he walked over where there was a pile of rocks which was only a few feet away from her. He looked at her with a crazed grin on his face. Seeing that grin made Chibiusa want to cry and hot air shivered seeing it. This only proved on her earlier thoughts about him being a deranged person. Yep, today we will be working on your reflexes, he said with his crazed grin widening. Oh how are we going to do that sen sensei? Chibiusa stuttered in fear because she knew that smile all too well. Easy, I'm going to throw these tiny rocks at you, and you're going to try and dodge to the best of your ability, he said casually making both Chibiusa and Hot Air's jaws drop. Effective training exercise, Saturn said with a smirk. He's a sadist Hot Air thought in fear. That's exactly what you're going to need if you want to become stronger. I'm going to die by the hands of a sadist. Are you crazy sensei? No I'm not, I'm just making you do the same exercises I did, he said with a frown and a grimace. You did this too. I did, but instead of just one person throwing rocks at me I had five, as in five QB powered clones he thought silently thought to himself causing his frown to increase. Watching you get pummeled by hundreds of rocks made living inside of you worth it, QB said from within his cage. Shut up you damn fox. That shit hurt like hell. You tried dodging rocks at high speeds and getting hit almost every time he said, but QB didn't retort he just laughed from his cage. I advise you to stand up now Chibiusa-chan, he said as he grabbed a few rocks from the rock pile. He began through the rocks with only a fourth of his actual strength, but unfortunate for Chibiusa they were still pretty fast. 
She saw one rock coming for her arm, but wasn't quick enough to dodge. She cried out in pain as the rock hit its mark making her bleed slightly. She had no time to nurse her wound as she saw another rock heading for her other arm. She quickly rolled out the way narrowly dodging the speedy rock. She cheered silently to herself, but felt an intense pain go through her stomach. She looked down at her stomach and touched it and winced in pain. Chibiusa looked back up at her sensei only to see him frowning at her. She saw that he had about three more rocks in his hands and was preparing to throw one of them. He threw the next one aiming at her leg and Chibiusa jumped over it. Naruto grabbed the next two rocks and threw them both at her. Chibiusa saw this and her eyes widened. She knew that would be quick enough to dodge, but knew that she had to try. One of the rocks came low and hit her in her right thigh, making her stumble a bit. She looked up weakly right as the other rock hit her straight in her chest, making her stumble back and fall to the ground. Haru watched all of this with worrying eyes and was about to rush down and heal her when Saturn stopped her. Don't move. Saturn demanded. I have to heal her. Can't you see how hurt she is? I know what you want to do, but just sit and watch. Alright I will, she said out loud to herself as she watched Naruto walk over to the battered and bruised Chibiusa. Hot air watched in confusion as Naruto went through a few seals and placed his hands over Chibiusa. She then watched in awe as his hands glow a dark green and he placed them over Chibiusa's body. Her wound slowly healed and she watched as Chibiusa opened her eyes and sat up slowly. How did he do that? Does he have healing power too? Hot air said in shock. I don't know how about you ask him to teach you it so you won't be using our healing power again, Saturn suggested. Hot air nodded and walked over to the two. Chibiusa was being helped up by Naruto, and she thanked him then turns towards Hot Air. Do you need any help? She asked quietly. Yes, can you take her to the room you were in, while I make her something to eat, he asked as he stared into her purple eyes with his blue ones. Silently she nodded and put Chibiusa's arm over her shoulder. Naruto walked into the house with Hot Air and Chibiusa following not too far behind him. Thirty minutes later. Naruto, Chibiusa, and Hot Air sat in Naruto's dining room eating some sandwiches and drinking tea. Haru got to know Naruto a little better, and now she doesn't think he is as deranged as before. Her and Chibiusa hit it off well and are now somewhat good friends. They all talked about various things before Haru brought up the subject of moving in with him. Naruto-san, about what you offered me earlier, she said quietly and timidly. Huh? He said as he took another bite out of his sandwich. He then turned his attention towards her and put his sandwich down seeing her serious expression. What's your answer Haru? Chibiusa watched on confused not understanding what was going on. What are you talking about? Naruto-san asked if I wanted to move in with him, since I have no place to live, Hotaru said in a small voice. Chibiusa said nothing after that and decided just to listen to what they had to say. And I decided that I would like to stay with you. And you don't have to worry, I won't be a burden. Glad to have you Hotaru-chan, and you won't be a burden to me or anyone, he said with a big smile. I always wanted a sister or any kind of family in general Naruto thought with a small smile on his face. Alright maybe now I can have someone to actually spar with, Chibiusa said with a big smile that matched Naruto's earlier one. Naruto stared blankly at her and then nervously turned towards Hotaru who was looking at him with a small blush on her face. I don't think. Do it. What, why furball? This would make watching over her much easier. I don't know. I'm already training Chibiusa and she's already a handful. Brat did you forget that a few of your weakling friends are coming in a week? Yes I remember he said completely ignoring the weakling comment. Then why don't you ask them to help you train the two of them idiot boy? Shut your mouth, you talking piece of fur he said cutting his connection with a demon. When he focused his attention back on the two girls he saw that both of them were staring at him with concern on their faces. Naruto sensei this is the second time today you spaced out. Are you feeling alright? Chibiusa said as she placed her hand over his forehead. You don't feel hot, so you don't have a fever. Sensei I think you she was cut off by the doorbell ringing. Naruto took this time to leave quickly and go to the door to see who would be here to see him. He was surprised when he opened his door and saw both Makoto and Yusagi standing there with smile on their faces. Uh. Naruto-san sorry for showing up like this unannounced is it alright we come in and talk. I also brought us some of my homemade cookies and cupcakes, she said with a nervous smile. Naruto stared at her and then looked at the bag in her hands. He did then the one thing that Makoto have only seen in Yusagi. He smiled a big smile with his mouth watering. Come on in and then we could try those sweets of yours, he said pilling her inside with his smile never leaving his face. Yusagi ran in after them after she had closed his door. When they got there, they saw both Hotaru and Chibiusa talking away. When Yusagi saw Chibiusa, things immediately went to hell. What the hell are you doing here brat? I don't have to tell you a dango Atama. Yes you do brat. No I don't. Do. Don't. Do, you little demon. Don't, you fat pig. What did you just call me? 
I'm not repeating myself, pig. That's it, she yelled as she dived over the table and tackled Chibiusa to the ground. She then put her in a headlock while they wrestled on the ground. Yusagi was moving too wildly to notice how much weight Chibiusa weighed. She then got tired after five minutes of wrestling with her pink-haired charge. Yusagi got to her feet and looked at everyone in the room and blushed in embarrassment. Everyone was staring at her with sweat drops, and Naruto was busy rolling on the floor in laughter. Wow that was funny, he said as he wiped a few tears from his eyes. Oh and Makoto-chan your cupcakes were delicious, he said as he licked his fingers. Makoto immediately looked towards her arm and saw that her bag was missing. She turned towards the table and saw it sitting there with, and she looked inside, she saw only a few cupcakes left out of the dozen she made. She slowly turned towards Naruto, who felt the killing intent coming off her in waves, and slowly backed away from her before he had an idea. Oh how about we spar Makoto-chan after we buy hot air chan some clothes, he said quickly while waving his arms around frantically. Makoto immediately stopped her advancement on him and hit a smirk because that was exactly the reason why she came in the first place, but frowned when he said buy some clothes. Hotter looked away when Makoto tried to get a good look at her. Jibiusa slowly got to her feet and yelped in pain when Yusagi hit her in her head. Who's the girl Naruto-san? Yusagi said jabbing her thumb towards Hotter. Oh that's Hotter-chan and I'm buying her clothes since she's going to be staying with me for a while, he said as he rubbed the back of his head. You two related? Makoto asked suspiciously as she eyed the girl and Naruto. Naruto was about to panic when he told her the truth, well as much as the truth that he knew himself. Oh she's just a friend of mine and she has no place to stay at the moment. She arrived pretty much like you too, but I found her by my gate. Well since she just came over she had no clothes with her, so we were going to go out and buy her some things while she stayed here, he said easily, and the two girls nodded their heads at his story, while Hotaru and Chibiusa stared on in shock. He's good. Not letting out the fact you were bruised and beaten, Saturn said in monotone as she continued to watch on through Hotaru's eyes. I know what you mean Saturn San Hotaru thought as she returned her gaze into a neutral one. I have to get him to teach me to go around the truth like that Chibiusa said as she let a smirk appear on her face. So are you all ready to go? Naruto said as he put on a black and orange jacket. Wait hold on, Yusagi said as she rushed towards the table and grabbed some cookies and a cupcake. She out a few cookies in her mouth and ran back to the others, who just sweat drop watching her stuff the cookies in her mouth. She then heard Chibiusa mumble something under her breath that sounded suspiciously like I knew she was a fat pig, and then hit her over the head with her fist. Making Naruto laugh and the others sweat drop once again. They all then made their way towards the mall where they would buy hotter clothes and other necessities. Three hours later. Naruto and company have just exited the mall with Naruto carrying over five large bags of clothes, two small bags of books, and one small bag full of soba noodles. To put it simply Naruto was crying about how empty his gamachan was. He turned his head a bit and saw Yasagi, Makoto, and Chibiusa carrying their own bags which wasn't much because they only had one bag each and made Naruto to promise to take them shopping again. He sulked and cried about it the whole time they were shopping, and though one thing about women or any girl in general. Avoid shopping with women at all cost he thought as he cried silent tears. Naruto said stop your crying I'm sure you'll get more money eventually, Chibiusa said happily as she ate some ice cream. Where did you buy that ice cream Chibiusa-chan? Naruto asked as he struggled to keep the bags balanced as he carried them. Oh I bought it at that ice cream stand, after I had took some money from your cute frog wallet, she said with ease, but paused when C felt some killing intent on her. She stopped in her tracks and slowly turned her head towards Naruto, who was giving her the most sadistic look he had ever given her. She shivered in fear at the look, and the only other person who saw it was Hotaru, who was trying her best to ignore it, but failing miserably. Well Chibiusa chan it, just make sure you pay me back for it okay, he said, drawing out the word pay with enough venom to make a snake envy. Both Makoto and Yusagi turned back to look at Naruto with raised eyebrows, or in Yusagi's case a look of fear. When they looked at Naruto, all they saw was him giving them a big foxy smile. What I mean is that you're going to pay me double of what you spent, he said with a laugh which made Chibiusa cry silent tears of agony, because she knew what he really meant Chibiusa you will do double of everything, including pay me back yes, she hated her sensei with a passion. Before they could do anything else they each heard dark laughter coming from a nearby building. They each looked up and saw five women standing on top of a building. Chibiusa and Hader both recognized two of them and glared at them. Emerald, Chibiusa hissed out. Hey all night, Hader said quietly with venom in her voice. Naruto heard the both of them and put the bags down off to the side. Hotaru, do you know how long I've been searching for you? Kaolinite said in false worry, as she glared down at the black-haired girl. Naruto and the girls instantly went on guard as they watched as both Kaolinite and Emerald jumped down from the building, with the three other demon women jumping behind them. The first Yoma resembled a cat and had dark purple skin with very skimpy clothes on. 
The second Yoma resembled a tiger with dark orange skin with skimpy clothes on. The last Yoma resembled a panther and had gray skin with skimpy clothes on. Now why don't you come quietly little Haderu, Kaolinite said as she motioned the three Yoma forward. I won't go anywhere with you, Haderu said in monotone, while the others watched the exchange not quite understanding what was going on. What do you want with Haderu-chan, Naruto said as he set himself in the Gokin stance. Yusagi and Makoto turned to each other, trying to figure how they could get away so they could transform. Her father wants her to come home. He told me if she doesn't come willingly well I guess I would have to put these three heart snatchers to use, she said shocking everyone there besides Haderu herself who was tempted on calling out Saturn, but thought better of it. Pure hearts, Haderu said in monotone recalling what Saturn told her earlier. Oh so you know, Kaolinite said with a smirk on her face. It doesn't matter if you know or not. You're going to pay what you did to me, and when I'm done with you the professor won't even recognize you, Kaolinite finished with a sneer. Haderu stared at her in confusion, wondering what the crazy redhead was talking about. Naruto stood there in the same stance not moving, but listening to every word the two were saying. It seems like Haderu left out a few things, and this redhead wants her for some reason. No matter I will find out what's going on eventually Naruto thought as he narrowed his eyes at Kaolinite. Emerald having enough of Kaolinite hogging the spotlight speaks up next. Brat this time you won't escape, Emerald said eyeing Chibiusa with her hateful eyes. You won't touch Chibiusa, Yusagi said in a serious tone while glaring at Emerald. Oh and what are you going to do about it blonde bimbo, Emerald sneered as she took a step towards Yusagi and the others. Yusagi touched her brooch and was about to transform when her hand was grabbed by Makoto. Yusagi you don't want to transform my front of Naruto and Haderu do you, Makoto said in a whisper, never taking her eyes off the two women and the three heart snatchers. Yusagi stared at Makoto for a few seconds before sighing. I'm Makoto-chan, but I don't think we'll be able to run away and transform. If we do imagine what may happen to Naruto and the girls, Yusagi whispered back as she eyed the foes in front of her. Enough of this, brat prepared to die, Emerald shouted as she rushed towards Chibiusa with speeds not many could keep up with, but Naruto could, and he appeared right in front of her and delivered a right punch into her gut sending her back. The others were shocked at his speed and watched as he glared down at Emerald. I won't allow you touch Chibiusa either, Naruto snarled as he glared down at Emerald who slowly rose to her feet. Kaolinite shaking her shock away ordered her minions to attack. The Yoma immediately ran at the unprepared girls, and the first one to be attacked was Yusagi who collapsed to the ground after being punched in her stomach, making her gasp for air. Makoto fared better than Yusagi and ducked under the kick the panther Yoma sent her and tried to retaliate with an uppercut, but it appeared to have done no damage. She stared on in shock but could do nothing as she was kicked in her chest, sending her flying into Yusagi who was just getting back to her feet. They both quickly got to her feet and both of them turned towards each other and came to a silent agreement. Yusagi grabbed her brooch and Makoto pulled out her henshin pen. Moon crystal power makeup. Jupiter star power makeup. In a flash of light and lighting Sailor Moon and Jupiter appeared. All fighting stopped to stare at the two of them and the two women went wide eyes. Naruto just ignored them since he already knew who they were and Hader was in shock. So their sailor Senshi, no matter grab the girl and take their pure hearts, Kaolinite shouted as she charged towards Naruto, who was defending attacks against Emerald. Naruto saw her coming and flipped out the way before she could hit him. Naruto looked between the two of them, knowing that he couldn't take on the both of them at the once. So he does the only thing he could think of at the moment, he puts his hands in see familiar seal. Hage Bunshin no Jutsu. But that five Naruto's appeared and surrounded Emerald and Kaolinite. Once again the fighting stopped and turned to look at the five Naruto surrounding the two evil women and the one Naruto standing a little ways back. Is that an illusion? Jupiter asked as she stared at the Naruto's in awe. I don't know, but we'll ask him about it later. Right now we have to fight or better yet run, Sailor Moon shouted as she ducked under a claw strike the cat Yoma sent her. Jupiter shook her head at her leader. She had no idea how she could be serious one moment and a clown the next. Sometimes she wonders what really goes on in her leader's head, but she figures it would be best if she didn't know. While they were handling two of the Yoma, the last one was cornering Chibiusa and Haderu. Haderu saw what Naruto had done and was shocked that a human could make copies of themselves. When she turned towards Chibiusa, she didn't look shocked at all. She must have known that he could copy himself she thought as she backed away from the tiger heart snatcher. The Yoma moved quickly and slapped Haderu away from Chibiusa while she immobilizes the girl with her hands. The Yoma pulled up the sleeve of her blouse to reveal a black star. Jibiusa looked on in fear as the star flashed black for a second before she was hit by a beam coming from the star. Ah, she screamed in agony as her heart was slowly being pulled from her. Haderu and the others watched in horror as their friend or charge got her heart pulled out of her. Haderu was shaking slightly and she felt herself getting angrier and angrier over each scream her new friend made. No, Chibiusa Chibiusa please be alright. 
Fill them make them pay, an evil voice said from within hot air. Hot air's eyes momentarily flashed red before they returned to normal. Naruto felt the dark presence in hot air grow stronger and looked around the battleground and saw that Sailor Moon was the only other person who felt it. He moved to help Chibiusa and to calm hot air, but got elbowed in the chin by Emerald, who had already destroyed the clones with Kaolinite. Emerald rushed at Naruto and slammed her fist into Naruto's chest, sending him crashing into a nearby building. Hot air saw this and her rage built even more. Naruto-san hot air thought as she looked at Naruto's motionless form and then back to Chibiusa's screaming one. She felt something in her snap and a wave of power rushed through her. They'll kill 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 them all, a maniacal voice shouted from within hot air, making her grab her head in pain. The others turned to stare at her and all the color drained from Kaolinite's face. Not her again she thought in fear. The heat snatcher that was busy taking Chibiusa's heart turned her head slightly to stare at the posse's hot air before she turned back to look at the screaming Chibiusa. After another minute of screaming, Chibiusa's heart crystal appeared out of her shining brightly. The tiger Yoma pulled it away from Chibiusa, making her skin go instantly pale, and she was dropped on the ground into an unconscious state. Yes that must be a talisman with a pure heart, Kaolinite said momentarily forgetting her fear over hot air. Before she could go and get it, the crystal disappeared from the heart snatcher's hand. This girl's heart is very pure, but it is not one of the pure hearts we're searching for, Neptune said as she held the heart crystal gently. She then tossed the crystal back over to Chibiusa's body. As the crystal entered her body, the color that was once drained from her slowly returned. Seems like you got a bad crystal, Urana said as she eyed Kaolinite and then turned her attention to the posse's hot air. And since we're here, I think we should destroy the girl before she fully awakens, Uranus finished as she prepared her attack along with Neptune. World shaking. Deep submerge. As the two launched their attacks on hot air, they never noticed the crazed smile on her face. Hotaru easily jumped over the two attacks and rushed towards the two startled Senshi. She raised her hand over her head, and a large ball of dark energy appeared in it. The ball soon started to reform into a disc, a very sharp disc that had sounded like a chainsaw. She cocked her hand back and threw at the two Senshi who dodged it, but the tree they were in was instantly split in half. The disc continued to fly through the air until Hotaru directed her hand to where Uranus had jumped to, and the disc changed course. Uranus saw it coming, and her eyes wide in horror as it headed straight for her. She stared on with her eyes never wavering from the sight of the spinning disc until it suddenly vanished from sight. She looked down and saw Hotaru unconscious with Naruto standing over her. He locked eyes with Uranus for a second before grabbing both Hotaru and Chibiusa and running off towards a safe place to put the two of them. He found an empty alleyway and put them both there. He then summons four Kage Bunshins and then bit his thumb and went through a series of seals. Kuchius no Jutsu, he shouted as he slammed his palm onto the ground. And an explosion of smoke a frog that was twice his size appeared with samurai armor on. Ama, could you guard these two while I handle some business, he said as he jabbed his thumb where the sounds of battle was coming from. The toad nodded its head and Naruto was off a second later. Naruto returned just in time to deflect a fatal blow that was aimed at Jupiter. Thanks Naruto, Jupiter said panting heavily. No problem Makoto-chan. How about I show you a move that you might recognize? He said as he undid the bandages on his arms and without waiting for a reply he disappeared and reappeared right under the panther Yoma and kicked it in the jaw, sending it into the air. He's doing the Kage bio. Is he going to do the same combo he did on me? She muttered as she watched his floating form in the sky. She wasn't the only one watching him, the other two Sailor Senshi, Emerald, Kaolinite, the two Heart Snatchers, and Tuxedo Kamen, who recently arrived along with the other Sailor Senshi. They all watched as the bandages wrapped around the heart snatcher and began spiraling down to the ground at a fast pace. Naruto then called out the name of his attack moments before he hit the ground. Bomb at range, he shouted as the heart snatcher hit the ground, causing a giant tremor to go through the ground and a huge cloud of smoke to cover the area. Taking this as his advantage Naruto jumped out of the crater her was in and rushed towards the cat Yoma and a ball of chakra appeared in his hands. Rasengan, Naruto's voice shouted throughout the cloud of smoke as he trusted the spiraling ball into the Yoma's chest, causing it to go flying to the same building Naruto was in, and it turned to dust on the moment of impact. The cloud soon cleared to reveal a slightly panting Naruto, a giant crater, one heart snatcher, two evil women, seven sailor senshi, and one tuxedo caiman, who were all staring at the damage with wide eyes. Kaolinite was the first to snap out of her shock, noticing that hot air was gone and two of her heart snatchers. Am it where the girl go, she cursed as she glared at Naruto with hate. Emerald did the same as she notices Chibiusa missing as well. Boy, who the hell are you? Emerald snarled as she prepared to attack again, but stopped when she noticed that all the senshi were there along with Cape Boy. Yuzumaki Naruto, he said with a big smile and a dangerous aura surrounding him making her taking a step back in fear. 
Now why don't you tell me why you want Chibiusa Chan and Hot Air Chan? He said as his eyes went red for a split second before returning to normal. The two women saw his eyes change along with Jupiter, who gasped in a breath slightly as she felt the killing intent coming off of him. I already told you. Her father wants her home, and he will do whatever is necessary for her to return, Kaolinite said as she glared at Naruto. Um, I don't have to tell you anything. Just have the little princess tell you, before she grabbed Kaolinite's shoulder and vanished, but not before Kaolinite gave an order to her last heart snatcher. Destroy them, the tiger Yoma complied and rushed toward Sailor Moon, who had already brought out her wand. Moon Princess Halation she shouted and her attack hit, but it just ran right through it. The Sailor Senshi excluding Sailor Neptune and Uranus, gasped in shock as the heart snatcher pierced its claws into Sailor Moon's stomach, before she threw her into a tree, knocking her out. This snapped the others out of their shock and attacked the heart snatcher together excluding Sailor Neptune and Uranus. Burning Mandala. Shine Aqua Illusion. Sparkling Wide Pressure. Venus Love Me Chain. All the attacks hit the heart snatcher head on, but it was still alive and barely moving. The outer senshi seeing enough launched their own attacks. World shaking. Deep submerge. This time when the two attacks hit, the Yoma was vanquished. The guardian senshi turns towards the outer senshi. Who are you and what's your purpose? Jupiter demanded as she glared at the two impassive senshi. Uranus sighed to herself before nodding her head towards Neptune and walking away. Where is she going? Mars said as she watched Uranus walk away from sight. That is none of your concern, Neptune said softly, but firmly. So who are you? Jupiter asked getting impatient. Naruto ignored them and silently created a Kage Bunshin to leave in his place, while he trailed Uranus. I am Sailor Neptune and my partner is Sailor Uranus. We're on a mission to collect the heart crystals from people who contain pure hearts. Our enemies are the heart snatchers who work for an organization known as the Death Busters. We have to collect the three pure heart crystals before they do. But recently our mission has been slightly altered the moment we saw that girl in dark clothing. If my partner and I are correct about that girl, then she must be destroyed before she fully awakens and destroy the entire solar system, Neptune explained as she stared at the other senshi. She turned her head slightly to see Tuxedo came in carrying Sailor Moon in his arms bridal style over to the group. Wait, are you talking about Hadaru? Jupiter asked as she stared at Neptune with narrowed eyes. Hadaru, if that is the girl's name then yes. Sorry, but I won't allow you to hurt Hadaru-chan, said the forgotten Naruto who walked up to the group with his eyes narrowed into slits. That girl is a danger to herself and everyone else in this universe. She deserves to be destroyed, the moment she finished that statement the entire area is flooded with killing intent, driving the sentious and tuxedo came into their knees. Let me get this straight, Naruto said in a deadly clam voice as he slowly walked towards Neptune shaking form. You and your friend want to kill Hadaru-chan huh? He said as he kneeled in front of Neptune so they could see eye to eye. When Neptune made eye contact with him, she had to stop herself from showing more fear than she was already. Deep blue eyes stared into red demon eyes. She looked over his face and felt even more fear rush through her. His whisker marks became more defined and feral. He had fangs coming out of his mouth while it was still closed. His hair became even more wild and untamed. You or anyone else doesn't decide who should die and who shouldn't, Naruto said with his face nearing hers. He recalled all the things that had once happened to him when he was younger. How people beat him, called him a demon when he merely housed the damn thing. He remembered every time he would beg for them to tell him why they would do the things they do, and he always got two different responses. Demons like you deserve to be killed or I don't have to answer to a demon he remembered it clearly, and to hear someone say something like she just did, nearly sent him over the edge. People like you make me sick. If you even dare try to lay a finger on Hadaru, he said as he brought his mouth next to her ear. I'll kill you, he whispered as he let up the killing intent, and his face slowly returned to normal. Naruto turned around to see the senshi and tuxedo came and stare at him in fear. He lowered his eyes to the ground before he dispelled himself leaving a shocked crowd. But the real Naruto. Naruto's been trailing Uranus for a while and had lowered down his chakra levels to almost near zero, so he wouldn't be detected by her. He watched as she walked into an alleyway and in a flash of light she changed into her civilian form. She had on khaki pants with black shoes and a white dress shirt. She had a small frown on her face and her short dirty blonde hair made her look like a boy. If Naruto hadn't seen her transform he would have mistaken her for a guy at first glance. He watched as she walked to a nearby yellow convertible and got into it. He watched as she drove off and sighed to himself in annoyance. Maybe I should buy myself a car he thought with a frown, and then his frown deepens as he got the memories from his Kage Bunshin. Well haven't I got myself into some shit, he cursed himself as he walked back to the area where he dropped off Hot Air and Chibiusa. He reached the area about 5 minutes later to see the two girls still unconscious. But unfortunate for him a crowd seems to have gathered around because of Gama. 
Should have known a giant frog wearing samurai armor would have drawn a crowd luckily for him Gama was big enough to cover his clones from being seen. He quickly dispels the men runs into a nearby alleyway and quickly runs up the wall. He gets to the roof of the building and jumps down into the alleyway where the two children were. He creates a kage bunch and hinge it into Shikamaru. He tells the clone to pick up Hotaru and head to his house. He walks over to Chibiusa and tries picking her up but can't because of the weight she has on. He looks at her wristbands and almost faints. I've been making her train with that amount of weights all day maybe I should spar with her tomorrow he said as he put Chakra into his arms and legs, then gently picks up Chibiusa. He walks up to Gama and thanks him for guarding the girls and dispels him back to the summoning plane. He then runs out the backside of the alleyway to avoid any confrontation with the people huddled up at the spot where Gama was previously at. The walk home took 40 minutes and he put both the girls in separate rooms while he made dinner. While making dinner Naruto thought about the idea about him getting a car once again. He set the table and put the food on the plates. He made some steak, vegetables, rice of course, and some dango for desert. Once he finished setting the table he was about to go up and check on the girls when the doorbell rung. He walked up to his doors and opens it and was surprised to see Makoto along with the rest of her gang. He tells them to come in and they all walk to the living room. He saw that they were all carrying bags and was confused about that. He walked in with the rest of them and brought out some tea that he had made for dinner with a two plates of dango. They each took a cup of tea and some dango or in Yusagi's case four of them. Uh sorry for being blunt and all but what are you guys doing here? He asked as he took bite out of the dango he held in his hands. The group looked at one another before Makoto was decided to be the spokesperson. You forgot these from earlier, Makoto said as she showed them the bags he saw them come in with. Oh I was wondering what I forgot. Now all that money I spent earlier won't go to waste, he said the last part under his breath. Also we wanted to talk about what had happened earlier, she said the last part staring directly into his eyes. Strong green met calm and slightly panicked blue. Naruto for the second time today sighed to himself. Alright we'll talk when the girls wake up, Naruto said as he tuned his head slightly because he heard movement from upstairs. Girls, what girls? Yusagi asked between bites of the dango she was eating. And before I forget these are really good Naruto-san, she said with a big smile on her face, one Naruto easily matched. Thank you Yusagi-chan. And the girls are the ones standing in the doorway, he said nodding his head behind the group. They turned around to see a nervous Hotaru and a sleepy Chibiusa. Hey, what's with all the noise Naruto-sensei? She said as she rubbed her eyes before she realized who was in the room and what she had just said. Her eyes went wide before she slowly turned her head to look at her sensei. She saw that his eyebrow was twitching uncontrollably and turned to her giving her a sadistic grin, which sent a shudder through everyone in the room. He took a deep breath before going through a dozen hand seals, when he had finished the wrist and ankle bands on Shibiusa shined a bright red. Increase weights by 10 pounds, he said loud enough for all in the room to hear. Yusagi and the others wondered what Naruto meant when they heard Chibiusa crash into the ground, creating a small crater. The others stared wide eyes at the miniature crater Chibiusa made. How much do her weights weigh Naruto-san, Ami said as she walked over to the pink-haired girl who was muttering curses under her breath. I'll say about 120 pounds, he said as he crossed his hands and nodded his head to himself. The others stared in shock at how much the girl could take. Are you sure that her body could handle the strain, Mamoru said as he calmly drank his tea while lying Naruto with curiosity. She could handle it. Chibiusa's body heals almost as fast as mine, Cape boy, he said under his breath, but the others still heard it, and Mamoru almost spit out his tea. How did you know? A small voice asked from below. Naruto looked down to see a blue cat looking up at him with suspicion. Naruto stared at her for a few seconds before answer her question and answering one in the process. Well for one I knew who you all were for a while now. Two, Makoto said that she wanted to talk about earlier and there's no way she would mention it around complete strangers. And three how did you get in my house, I didn't see you come in with the others and that means you too, Naruto said as he pointed his finger to the white cat that was eating some dango. Oh we climbed through your window, since you closed your door when we were about to walk in, Artemis said as he stopped chewing on the dango. Wait, why aren't you surprised that Luna and Artemis can talk Naruto? Mamoru said as he sat his tea down on the table. Well I know toads and a foxes that can talk, he said shrugging his shoulders. The others just stared at Naruto for a minute before accepting his answer. How about we finished our talk after dinner I'm sure you're all hungry, he said as he walked into his dining room with the others following. Chibiusa followed the others at a much slower pace because she was still on the ground. Once we're done eating, we can begin our talk, Naruto said as he sat the table for his extra guest. Yes once we finish Naruto-san, we talk, Yusagi said in a serious tone locking eyes with Naruto. Once everyone was done eating they all met in Naruto's living room. 
Yusagi, Mamoru, Chibiusa, and Hadaru sat on Naruto's long couch, while Minako, Rei and Ami sat on his short couch. Makoto sat in one of Naruto's lounge chairs, and Naruto sat in the other on the opposite side of her. The tension in the room was thick, and the tension was even thicker between Yusagi and Naruto. Yusagi's friends wondered why she was acting so strange around Naruto. Usually she would be all happy and full of energy, but now she seemed to be putting up a cold and serious persona. Her friends caught a glimpse of her eyes and were surprised to see that they were as cold as ice and not a happy blue that she was known for. They turned their attention to Naruto, whose own blue eyes were cold and not as happy blue like he had showed them earlier. Without warning Yasagi began letting out a large amount of killing intent, making everyone in the room expect for Naruto to shake in fear. He just stood there and let out his own killing intent subconsciously. Neither of the two blondes knew why they were acting like this towards each other, but they knew that they didn't like each other at all. What is it about this Adango Atama that pisses me off? He thought as he glared into her icy blue eyes that were so much like his own. I don't know why, but I really don't like this boy. He fills me with so much hate, why is that? I could never hate anyone, but he's different why? She thought as her face darkened. They were both brought out of their thoughts when they saw that their guest friends were struggling to breath, and some even had tears coming out of their eyes. They soon realized what the both of them were doing and stopped their glaring, and the killing intent vanished, instantly making everyone gasp for air. Chibiusa and Hader were shaking fiercely and had tears running down their faces. Naruto and Yusagi immediately went to the two children's sides and comforted them, while saying soothing words in their ears trying to calm them. Lamoru shook of the effects of the killing intent immediately after it was over and comforted the shaking Chibiusa while glaring at Yusagi and Naruto lightly. Makoto, Minako, Ami, and Ri were next to break out of their fear and not long after Luna and Artemis. Once everyone had calmed down Makoto was the first to speak. Okay now that everyone is calm and collected, how about you tell us about how you did those techniques of your Naruto-san, she said as she stared at him intently. Naruto was about to speak when QB told him of two strong presences outside his home. He sighs to himself in frustration when he realized who it was. Alright I'll tell you, but first let me bring in out two guests, he said as he calmly stood up and walked out the room, leaving a room full of confused people. Yusagi stared at the door he left out of with cold eyes. Mamoru seeing this asked Yusagi what was bothering her. Isako, are you alright? You've been acting strange around Naruto-san, he said, catching the attention of everyone in the room especially Chibiusa, Hadaru, and Makoto. It's nothing Momo-chan, she said with a nervous laugh while scratching the back of her head. Isagi, there's no use lying. We felt the killing intent both you and Naruto was letting off, Makoto said as she stared at her princess with a worried expression. Yes, why are acting so hostile to Naruto-san? Ami asked as she also stared at her princess. I don't know. It's just something about him that pisses me off, she said with a frown, until she realized what she said and turned to look at the others, who were giving her looks of shock and disbelief. I never knew Yusagi could use language like that Ami thought with her eyes wide. Wow Yusagi is just full of surprises today Rei thought with a sweat drop. She acts differently every time Naruto is around Minako thought as she narrowed her eyes a little. Why does she hate? No she could never hate anyone. Maybe dislike, but what makes her dislike Naruto so much? Makoto thought as she also narrowed her eyes. Something is wrong with Yusako, and it centers on Naruto Mamoru thought as he stared at the silent Yusagi. Why does Yusagi hate Naruto sensei so much? It doesn't make sense. She barely even knows him Chibiusa thought as she felt her anger rise. The tension in here I getting too thick. I'm going to go and check on sensei Hader thought as she stood up and walked out the room. Chibiusa saw this and followed after her wondering where she was going. The others just stayed silent and watched as the younger girls walked out the room. While on this was going on Naruto was having difficulties with his two other uninvited guests. In front of Naruto's house. Naruto walked calmly into his yard with his hands crossed over his chest. He looked around as if he was looking for something when his eyes landed on a particular tree. Come on out. I know where you are, so there's no use in hiding, he said as smirk formed on his face. Sailor Uranus. Sailor Neptune, he said with his smirk widening as he watched the two senshi jump out of their spot in the tree. Where's the girl? Uranus demanded as she crossed her hands over her chest and glared at Naruto hatefully. Neptune stayed silent as she watched on with a slight fearful gaze on Naruto. She remembered what he had said to her earlier in the day, and she would be lying if she said that she wasn't afraid of him and she sure as hell wouldn't let him or her partner know that either. So she settled with just staying quiet and let Uranus handle him, and if she was needed she would help her, but for now she would just stand her ground and watch everything proceed. If I were you I would have asked, here Naruto coughed a few times and tried his best to mimic Sailor Uranus' voice and saying it perfectly due to him perfecting the henge jutsu. Chi, how did you know we were here? He said impersonating Sailor Uranus perfectly. 
said Senshi glared at him hatefully, while Neptune didn't know either to laugh at her friend or glare at Naruto, she settled for the latter. That's what you should have said, instead of demanding your wants, he said with a mock frown. Shut up and bring me the damn girl, Uranus shouted in anger and frustration. Uranus Ann, I'm not going to give you Hadari Chan, he said as he set himself in the Goken ready stance. Uranus smirked and without warning charged at Naruto with a petty impressive speed. She threw a punch at Naruto's face, but he batted it away and countered with a back end to her face, sending her to the ground a few feet away from him. Uranus rubbed her face and glared at Naruto before rushing him again. Naruto sighed to himself in annoyance, and he was still feeling quite frustrated after his confrontation with Isagi, so he was on a short fuse. As she appeared in front of him attempting to kick him in his head, Naruto grabbed it and winced a little at how powerful her kick was. Seeing this as a moment of weakness, Uranus grabbed his arm and lifted her body into the air, then swiftly kicking Naruto in his face, knocking him to the ground. Not letting this chance go by, she rushed and grabbed Naruto by his arm and threw him towards Neptune. Neptune seeing this raised both of her hands in the air and a huge ball of water started to form in her hand. Beep submerge, she shouted as the water blast shot at Naruto's flying form. Naruto's eyes widened as the water blast was inches from his face, before it connected with him sending him sailing into a tree, snapping it in half. Uranus smirked along with Neptune and was about to venture into the house when twelve Naruto's appeared. Five surrounded Uranus and five surrounded Neptune. They then rushed at the shock senshi. Dot the Naruto's shouted as they planted their right hand onto the ground and kicked both senshi high into the air. Then the last two Naruto's jumped onto a clone's back and flipped high into the air, waiting for their respected foe to reach them. When they did they gave both Senshi an axe kick to the face, sending them both rocketing to the ground, and before they impacted the ground into the world of unconsciousness, they heard Naruto shout the name of his attack. Naruto Renden, he shouted as he landed on the ground in a crouch. Wow, am I going to learn how to do that sensei? Hotaru asked from the doorway startling Naruto. He turned his head so fast, Hotaru thought he would get whiplash. How long have you been there Hadari chan Naruto asked as he created a Kage Bunshin and had it pick up Neptune while he picked up Uranus and walked towards his house. Around the time when Sailor Uranus threw you at Neptune, she said with a shrug of her shoulders and followed Naruto as he walked inside the house. Naruto walks back into the living room where everyone is waiting when they see him carrying Sailor Uranus prone form with a clone carrying Neptune. The others immediately got up and followed Naruto as he walked into one of his spare rooms. Lucky for him, he had bought twin beds when he found out his friends were coming to this dimension, so he had to be prepared for them. He placed them in each of the two beds and waited patiently for them to wake up. Yusagi walked up to him and demanded to know what had happened to them. What happened? And why are they here? She asked in a cold manner shocking everyone their expect for Naruto and Hader. Naruto just fixed her with a small glare and explained what had happened while they were all inside. So you're telling me that these two attacked you demanding that you hand over Hadaru, Yusagi asked while casting a worried look to the impassive Hadaru. I wonder how they found about your place Naruto, Makoto asked as she leaned against the wall with her arms crossed. I don't know. They either followed you here or they trailed me when I left, but I doubt that because I followed Uranus here and found out who she really was, he said with a frown on his face. Naruto-san, not trying to be rude or anything, but are you going to tell us about who and where you're from now? Luna asked as she jumped onto the desk that was by an open window. Naruto sighed to himself and let a small frown appear on his face. Alright I'll tell you. But I want no one to interrupt me while I tell you about myself, he said with a serious tone. Naruto could only imagine how many times he had been interrupted or told to shut up when he was talking. He wasn't going to go through that again, because he remembered how many times he disrupted one of Iruka's lectures, and he wasn't happy about it. So he wasn't taking any chances with this, and he would make sure they heard his story without interrupting. Fifteen years ago in another universe a demon called the QB no Kitsune attacked a shinobi village called Kanahagakur no Sato. The demon had proved to be unstoppable and had killed and destroyed many lives. The leader at the time, the Yandame Hokage, found a way to stop the demon by sealing the demon inside a newborn baby. He did this by summoning the Shinigami to the human plane and sacrificed his life to seal the demon. October 10 is the day the QB was defeated, the day the Yandame died, and the day I was born, here he paused to take in a breath of air and to examine everyone's reaction to his tale so far. They all had frowns on their faces, and Yusagi's face was unreadable. He frowned mentally, but continued his tale. The Sandame Hokage a few days after the sealing told the village about me being the QB's container. He told them how the Yandame wanted me to be seen as a hero, the village, and most of the shinobi demanded for my death when they found out, and the Sandame created a law to forbid anyone to speak of the QB's ceiling to the younger generation, so I could have a better chance at making friends. If they did speak of it they would be immediately executed. 
However, the villagers found a way around the law and told their children to stay away from me. The shops would always sell me foods that were rotten or increase the prices for items to an unbelievable price, or just wouldn't let me in at all. I got regular beatings and had many assassinations attempts on my life more times than I can count. I was kicked out the orphanage at the age of six and got my own apartment sometime after. The only foods I could eat were Raymond at Ichirakus, because that was the only place that would sell me any food without overcharging. The people were nice and were only some of the few who watched out for me including the Sandame. When it was time for me to enter the Ninja Academy I was ignored and pretty much treated like shit, he said with a deep frown. The others looked on at him sympathetically and had a few tears forming in some of the girls' eyes when they heard how many times he was almost killed. Unknown to Naruto, Mamoru were the girls, Neptune and Uranus, had awakened the moment Naruto began his story. Neptune had tears forming in her eyes, but no one noticed and Uranus kept quiet, but had an expressionless face to hide her emotions. She was never the one to show emotions, and she wasn't going to start now. She felt bad for the kid and how his life turned out, but she had a mission to complete, and she was going to finish it. She was about to sit up, but decided against it when Naruto continued his story. The teachers would do their best to hinder my progress for years, and the only one who tried to help me out was Aruka sensei Sure he hated me at first like the rest, but he was there for me when it mattered. When I had failed my genin test for the third time a man named Mizuki told me about a special way to pass the exams. I didn't know at the time, but the man was one of the many who hated me for having the QP sealed in me. But anyway he told me that if I broke into the Hokage Tower and stole a scroll called the Scroll of Sealing, I would pass the exam. After successfully stealing the scroll I learned the first technique in it the Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. Not long after learning it Aruka found me, and then Mizuki showed up demanding the scroll for me. He then revealed to me that I had the QB sealed in me, and that I was the demon itself. However, Aruka told me that I was only the container and not the demon itself. Mizuki attacked him, and I defeated him with my Taju Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, and was promoted to Genin for creating solid clones. I was then put on a Genin team with Ichiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura. There is only one word to describe Sasuke, and that he's a total emo. He was rookie of the year and had a hell of a lot of fangirls at his side. He would brood all day in a corner and dream about one day killing his brother Itachi. The reason for this is because his whole clan was killed off by his older brother. He then became an avenger bent on killing Itachi by any means necessary, but he was like a brother to me, no matter how broody the bastard is. Haruno Sakura was his number one fangirl and my crush at the time, but that changed by the time Sasuke abandoned the village, but I won't tell you that until later, he said with a frown while glaring at the wall. He told them about his mission to Nami no Kuni. How the Chunin exams went. How he met Jiraiya at the hot springs and how he learned how to summon toads. Explained how his fight with Gara went. He told them about the Sandame's death and about the search for Tsuna Day to become the Godame Hokage. Explained how Ichiha Itachi and Hashigaki Kisum tried to capture him for the Akatsuki. How he and Jiraiya found Tsunade, Shizun, and her pig Tauntin. How he bet Tsunade that he could master the Rasengan in a week. He then explained how Orochimaru and Kabuto showed up and fought with Tsunade. Explained how he used the Rasengan on Kabuto defeating him, but not killing and winning Tsunade's necklace. How Sasuke challenged him to a fight back in Kanoha on top of the hospital. He then explained how Sasuke abandoned the village and tried to defect to Odo. He told them about how his friends Nara Shikamaru, Hayuganiji, Inuzuka Kiba and Akamichi Choji were sent to retrieve him. Explained how they encountered the Sound Four and how each of them spilt up to battle with each of them. How he encountered Kagaya Kimimro and how Rock Lee showed up and fought him while he chased after Sasuke. He then explained how his fight with Sasuke went at the Valley of the End and he was just reaching the end. Sasuke charged up a Chidori in his new cursed form, while I charged a Rasengan using one tail of QP's power. We charged at each other with our respected attacks and rammed them into each other. Sasuke tried to overpower my attack, but I wouldn't give up and let the bastard go to that pedophile Orochimaru. Plus I had made a promise to Sakura-chan and I never go back on those, and while I was thinking that I felt a new power rush through me. It wasn't QP's because his felt all negative and evil. The power I felt was warm and full of a light unlike mine or QP's chakra. Then an explosion occurred and I ended up in this universe a few months ago, he finished his story and turned to the gathered Senshi and Mamoru, who all had their mouths open in shock or their eyes were wide. That's one hell of a story, Makoto said as she closed her mouth and raised an eyebrow at Naruto. Wait, how do we know all of this is true? Rei asked as she stared at Naruto in slight disbelief. Well you don't, but a few of my friends will be arriving from my dimension in about a week. So you could just ask them when they get here, he said with a shrug of his shoulders. You really have a demon sealed inside of you? Hotaru asked with wide eyes. Naruto stared at her with a knowing look and nodded his head. 
He's just like me she thought with a small smile. Can we see this power of this demon? Ray asked so she could tell if the part about having a demon sealed inside of him was true. I don't know about that, Naruto said a little nervously. He didn't know how they would feel about QB's power, and he had already figured that they're alright with it, since they haven't tried to kill him yet. Thus show us already Yuzumaki, said the voice of Uranus shifting herself to a sitting position on the bed. She crossed her arms over her chest and narrowed her eyes at him, ignoring the inner Senshi and Mamoru's shock faces. I knew you two were up, he said as he smirked at her and saw they Neptune was also sitting up and glanced at Naruto with a sorrowful expression on her face. So you heard everything huh? Judging by the look on your face, Naruto said as he stared into Neptune's eyes. She said nothing, but nodded her head slowly at him. And now you know why I said what I had said earlier, he finished as he turned away from her and turned towards the glaring Uranus. Now I guess I'll show you a little of QB's power, but not too much because I don't want to lose control of myself, he said with a frown as he walked out the room. The others followed closely behind him, and Hot Air walked by Naruto's side. When they reached Naruto's training grounds he turned towards them and spoke in a serious tone. When I begin to draw on QB's power I want none of you to come near me do you understand? He asked. He saw everyone nod their heads, and he put his hands in the seal of the ram. Hey Fuzzy loan me some of your chakra. So I can show these people that what I told them was true. Brat, you call me Fuzzy again and you will pay the consequences, QB growled from his cage. Whatever you say Fuzzy. Now give me some of your chakra. Um, I'll give you some alright, he said with a dark chuckle as he gave Naruto some of his chakra. The group watched as Naruto was covered in a freighting red aura and went through a transformation. His hair became even more untamed and shaggy. His eyes turned red with black slits in them, making them take on a demonic cat or fox-like appearance. The whisker marks on his face became more engraved and feral. The fangs in his mouth enlarged and showed through his mouth even when it was closed. His hand slowly changed into claws, and the last thing that completed his look was the chakra tail and the chakra fox ears that appeared on him. He went down on all four, and the chakra formed over his claws and feet. Am it QB too much, he growled out in pain in a dual voice. Soon a second tail slowly started to form, but he held it back as he summoned some of his chakra trying to overpower QB's. No matter how hard he tried, QB's chakra continued to wash over him. Brad you wanted my power, now take it and see how much you can handle and pray you don't slaughter your new friends, QB laughed maniacally from his cage. The people watching watched on in fear as the demonic energy watched over them. They found themselves shaking and even though Uranus tried to hide it, she was shaking as well. A second tail soon forms and before a third could a bright white flash surrounded Naruto and he returned to normal. He was standing there in confusion and in slight fear as was everyone else. What happened? He said confusedly. I have no idea. But that power was evil and uncontrolled. I guess you were telling the truth about having a demon sealed in you, Rei said as she stared at Naruto. Naruto that power was freighting, Makoto said as she walked up to Naruto's panting form. Are you alright? She said as she put a hand on his shoulder. He looked up at her with his hair shadowing half of his face. I'm fine Makoto-chan. Just got more power than I could handle, damn fox, he said as he collapsed to one knee. Makoto helped him back to his feet with Minako who had run up the moment he fell. The others watched this and seeing enough Uranus and Neptune began to walk away, but not before Uranus threw one last comment over her shoulder. Yuzumaki, if the power within the girl ever awakens. We will destroy her and you if you get in our way, she said as both her Neptune disappeared after walking away. Okay if you want you can come back inside and we can talk some more, Naruto said with a weak smile, ignoring Sailor Uranus's threat. Sorry Naruto-san, but I have to get going. I have to study for a test tomorrow, Ami said in an apologetic voice making both Usagi and Naruto groan in frustration. They both realized what they did and the temperature dropped about 10 degrees. Before anything could happen between the two of them, Mamoru walked up to Usagi and placed his hands on her shoulder, instantly calming her. Isako, we should get going. It is getting pretty late. Thank you for the hospitality and for the record I don't think you're a demon. Maybe a little strange, but no demon, he said as he walked away with Usagi walking away from him. Naruto smiled at the guy he liked him. He wasn't too sure on Usagi though. Sure they got along well a few days ago, but every time he saw her, he slowly started to dislike her. He doesn't know why, but he knew that he would find out eventually, and until then he'll try his best to be civilized towards her. He was brought out of his thoughts when he felt someone tap his shoulder. He turned around to see his student Shibiusa. Naruto-sensei I wanted to apologize for Usagi's behavior earlier, she said as if she was Usagi's mother. Naruto let out a chuckle and waved off her comment as he moved out of Makoto's and Minako's arms. Don't worry about it Chibiusa-chan. 
I'm sure she was just having a bad day, but you should get going too, or those two will leave you behind, he said as he pointed his finger over to the impatient Yusagi and the calm Mamoru, who had a slight almost unnoticeable twitch in his eyebrow at Yusagi's impatience. So get going and don't forget you have training at 5 in the morning, he said with an evil crackle that sent a shiver down her spine, hot airs and everyone else around him. Alright sensei see you tomorrow. Come on Luna time to go, Chibiusa said as she walked away to catch up with her guardian. Luna turned to Naruto and bowed her head a little and ran after Chibiusa. Rei walked up next and eyed him warily before bowing and giving him a small smile. Thank you for sharing your secret with us Naruto-san. But I have to go back to the shrine and finish my chores. Goodbye Naruto-san, she said as she silently walked away. Naruto, I have to say that you're one surprising person. I mean seriously having a demon sealed inside of you and training two young girls, that's really something. What's next buying a really expensive and cool car and getting your driver's license in two days flat? If that happens, I'll buy you anything you want, she said as she patted his back with a big smile on her face, before running off with Artemis right behind her. Naruto stared after her as if she had grown two heads, and he blinked and looked back at Makoto, who was eyeing Minako in the same fashion. Minako is weird Makoto-chan, Naruto said as he turned back to where Minako had just run off at, while missing the small blush on Makoto's face, before she quickly hit it. Naruto is it alright if I come by tomorrow and watch you train Chibiusa and Hadaru-san? She asked a little nervously hoping he wouldn't say no. Sure, but just to warn you. My training methods are unique, he said with an evil and sadistic smile, making Hadaru look at him with a look that clearly read I'm going to die a slow and painful death. But Chibiusa. Chibiusa had been walking with Yusagi and Mamoru before she suddenly stopped in her tracks with a look of fear on her face. Yusagi was the first to notice her stop and saw the expression on her face, and it worried her. Chibiusa what wrong? Yusagi asked in a soothing voice. Chibiusa slowly turns to her with her fear-stricken face. I feel as if I'm going to be put through hell, and it's not going to be the hell you go to when you die. No this feels like it's going to be a thousand times worse, and even the lowest pits of hell would feel more comfortable than what I'm feeling right now, and there is only one person who can make me feel like this, she said with her frightened look increasing. Isagi just looked at her funny and told her to hurry it up, but she could have swore she heard her mutter something about sadistic blonde bastards. She shook her head and decided to go with Chibiusa tomorrow for her training. But Naruto. Naruto had finished saying goodbye to Mikoto, and he had told her that she could come by tomorrow. Now he was staring at Hadaru who was staring back at him with a determined look. Naruto-san, can we start my training tonight? Why do you want to start tonight and not in the morning? He asked in confusion. Because I don't want to slow Chibiusa-chan down in training, also I want to have an early start so I can be up to speed with what you had taught her, she said with her determination never wavering. Naruto sighed and wondered why he took up this thing with being a sensei anyway, that was until he remembered that Chibiusa had blackmailed him. He put his hands in his back pocket and pulled out two purple fingerless gloves. He wondered why he had got those again and remembered that he had got them for Ino. She won't mind and she'll never know how to put these gloves on, and I want you to punch that log over there 300 times with both arms, and when you're done with it I want you to kick the log 300 times with both legs. Once you're finished with it I want you to do 100 push-ups, sit-ups and run around this clearing 20 times all while wearing these, he said with an evil crackle, as he asked her to hold out both of her hands. He placed his both of his hands over on wrist each and held a firm grip on them while focusing a little of QP's power. He heard hot air whimper a little when the chakra wrapped around her wrist, and he repeated the action with her ankles. I'm increased by 15, he said as he put his hands in a weird seal, and she immediately fell to the ground face first. When you're able to pick yourself up and move properly. I want you to get started on those logs, he said with a big smile, and then put his hands in another seal, and 20 clones appeared. I want 10 of you to walk on water and 5 to work on cutting leaves, and the last of you to work on climbing trees, he then turns back to the shock hot air. Since you're training I should train as well, he said simply while creating 10 QB-powered clones that all gathered a pile of rocks and began throwing them at him at insane speeds. Hader watched in horror as he was hit almost every time and shivered because this was the same exact exercise Chibiusa had to do earlier that day. What have I gotten myself into? At least this way you can become stronger faster and be ready for Mistress 9, Saturn said with a sadistic smile on her face, one that Hader couldn't see, but one she could definitely feel. You're not making this any easier Saturn Hadaru thought with a mental glare. I'm not supposed to Hadaru. Naruto was ignoring everything around him wondered what that strange power he had felt earlier was. It felt like the same power he used against Sasuke back at the Valley of the End, but stronger. He had to figure out what it was then he will be able to understand why he feels such a strong pull to the senshi and that power. 
unknown to him QB was listening to his inner thoughts and glared behind him at the door with a white rose and a crescent moon on it. He could tell the boy that his answers were behind this door, but then he would be purified by it and disappear, and all of his power would go to the boy. No, he would tell the boy about it eventually, but after he found some way to continue to live inside of him. And until then he would stay quiet and allow himself to be purified a little at a time, and hope that the boy don't draw on the power too much, or he will be instantly killed. Heh, sorry kid, but I can't have you finding out yet QB thought as he went to sleep. Next day. Haderu woke with a groan she had been training for 7 hours last night. It took her the first 2 hours to get used to the weights Naruto had put on her. 30 minutes to walk to the log post and 1 hour and 30 minutes to finish punching the log. When it came to kicking the log in went a little faster, and she ended that after an hour. Then she spent the last 2 hour doing the other exercises ending at roughly at 3 in the morning. Now here she was now waking up 2 hours later glaring at her smiling sensei. Once again she asked herself what the hell has she gotten herself into. Hadri chan it's time for training, Naruto said with a sadistic smile on his face. She also wondered how in the hell did Naruto act so damn cherry in 5 in the morning. And how in the hell is he up after all that damn training he put himself through last night. She knew that he went to sleep roughly at the same time as she, but she doesn't understand how until it hit her. The damn demon made it so that he could sleep for a few hours and become completely re-energized. She wondered if having Saturn and Mistress Nine in her body has given her a similar effect. It does Hadaru, Saturn voice cut through her musings. If you would just sit up and stop being lazy, you will feel like you have just had a full day of rest, Saturn said with a sigh. Sure enough when she sat up she felt like she had gotten at least 10 hours of sleep. How is this possible? It's quite simple. All Sailor Senshi has a fast healing rate, and my healing rate is higher than that of Sailor Moon's. How I know this you may ask. Well it's because when it comes to raw power I'm the strongest and fastest healer out of all the Sailor Senshi. And with you still having Mistress Nine sealed in you, is also helping your healing rate along as well, Saturn explained in a slight arrogant yet serious tone. Alright I understand Hadari thought with a slight smile. Naruto stared at her as her eyes were glazed over and wondered what was wrong and just shook his head and decided to break her out of her thoughts with the only way he could by being a sadistic sensei. Hadari it's time for training, he repeated effectively knocking her out of her inner conversation with Saturn. Um, what is sensei? It's time for training. Here put these on, he said as he handed her a purple shirt with black shorts and some black training shoes. When you're done getting dressed meet me down at the training grounds, he said as he left and went to the training grounds and created 50 clones. He ordered the first 25 to try cutting a leaf with their chakra and ordered the other 25 to attack him, but before they did he had to up his weights by 10. Okay bring it on, Naruto shouted just as all the Kage Bunshin rushed him. But Chibiusa. Chibiusa awakened with a loud yawn while rubbing some drool from her mouth. She sleepily looked at the clock by her bed and saw that it was 7 in the morning. She yawned again and laid back down on her bed and slowly closed her eyes for about 5 seconds before she suddenly sat up and stared at her clock with wide eyes. No, 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 this is not happening, she said with a groan as she quickly jumped out of the bed and quickly though on her training clothes and stuffed her bag with clothes to change after she was done training. She then ran to the bathroom and washed up a bit and then ran down the stairs to the kitchen with her bag in hand. She put some bread in the toaster and waited a few minutes for it to get done and quickly took it out while spreading some jelly on it. She put the piece of toast in her mouth with the other piece in her hand and quickly left out the door, leaving a dust trail on her track to Naruto's place. After 30 minutes of running non-stop she finally arrived in time to see hot air running laps around the training grounds. She also saw Makoto punching a log and Naruto was holding a ball of blue chakra in his hands. She watched as he thrust the chakra ball into the tree while shouting Rasengan completely shattering it on impact. This brought Hadaru to a stop in her running to stare at Naruto with wide eyes. Makoto stopped punching the log while ignoring her bleeding hands to also stare at Naruto. Chibiusa walked into the field with her bag over shoulders with her eyes wide at the attack Naruto had just done. As soon as she walks into the field she watches as Naruto puts his hands in a weird seal. Chibiusa's weights increase by. 20, he said loud enough for everyone to hear, and she saw her bands glow a bright red before she crashed face first into the ground. Makoto eyes widened to the size of saucers when she saw the crater Chibiusa was in. She didn't know how the girl could handle the weight, but put it off as healing powers from the future. Oh and that's just the start of your punishment for being two hours late. Now go and start on your warm-ups, Naruto said with a sadistic gleam in his eye. He then watched as Hadaru finished running her laps and came to a stop while panting hard. Alright Hadaru it seems that you adjusted to your weights pretty well, so I'm going to increase them, he said as he put his hands once again in a strange seal. Hadaru's weights increased by. 
10, he said, and hot air collapsed to her knees with her teeth gritted, while glaring at Naruto hatefully. Now while you try to get used to your weights, I will be throwing these small pebbles at you. So I advise you to adjust to your weights fast, he said with an evil laugh. Makoto watched all of this with a slight smile on her face. He sure does work them hard. And I never saw anyone use these kind of training methods before. But I think he's going a little overboard with the weights. Hmm, maybe I should ask him to put some weights on me as well. I have to get stronger those Yoma and Heart Snatchers beat us all like we were newborn babies. None of our attacks had work, and not even Sailor Moon's had worked, and she's the strongest out of all of us. We all need to be training and be prepared for the next battle. I don't want to get saved by those other senshi again she thought with a frown, and went back to punching the log with renewed efforts. While she was having her thoughts Naruto had called both Chibiusa and Hadaru over to him. Now it's time for your next step of training, he said causing both girls' eyes to widen. You're going to learn how to summon your chakra, and if you have a decent amount, I'll teach you a jutsu, he explained causing both girls to look at him in confusion. Naruto-sensei what are chakra and jutsu, Hadaru asked, and Makoto walked over to hear his explanation as well. Chakra is basically a combination of both spiritual and mental energy. Without chakra the human body cannot live, so basically without it you will die if you ever run out or open up all chakra gates at once. Shinobi use chakra in our techniques called jutsu. We use hand seals to help concentrate and manipulate chakra into our jutsu. Jutsu are split into three categories, ninjutsu which uses hand seals most of the time and sometimes it doesn't. All I know about it really is that it really cool, and I can't really explain it, so I'll just show you the ninjutsu I was going to teach you. He explained as he turned away from the girls and went through a few hand seals, and shouted the name of his jutsu, while turning his head up to the sky. Hain. Kakaku no jutsu, he shouted as he shot out a giant fireball from his mouth into the sky. He turns back to the girls to see that their eyes were wide, and that Chibiusa was looking at him with red hot fire burning in her eyes. Can we start learning that technique now sensei? She asked fidgeting anxiously. Not yet allow me to finish my lecture. Even though I hate them myself, he mumbled the last part under his breath. Now as you may have seen that was an ninjutsu technique. I would show you a jinjutsu, but I have no talents in them. But I will tell you that jinjutsu have to do with illusions. Most jinjutsu are deadly, and even though they're illusions they could still cause major damage to the mind. I know this one guy who can cast a jinjutsu on you only by looking him in the eye, and that's only because of his sharingan his dijutsu. A dijutsu is an eye technique that only comes within a clan, and most people call them a kekai genkai or a bloodline. Sharingan comes from the Ichiha clan, and it has three special abilities, the first one allows it to memorize any technique it witnesses. The second is the ability to track fast moving objects, and the last is the ability to cause hypnosis. But I'm getting off track. He said while scratching the back of his head with a sheepish smile on his face. Other than ninjutsu and jinjutsu there is also tojutsu. The jutsu is hand-to-hand -hand combat that involves martial arts and mainly focuses on stamina only, and that is why I have given you both the weights you have on now, he finished with a slight smile, and everyone who had this was slack-jaw at what they heard, and even QB was in shock, because he never knew his container knew this much on chakra and jutsu. Ah that was a really long explanation, so can you just show us how to summon our chakra, so we could do that cool jutsu, Chibiusa asked with a big smile on her face. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle at her antics. She reminds me of myself when I'm about to learn a new jutsu now put your hands in the seal you too and focus on your energy and bring it up, he instructed and turns to Makoto, who was trying also and was about to stop her from trying. Since anyone above the age of 14 who had never used chakra before would never be able to use it. But what he saw next shocked him greatly. Green chakra was swirling around Makoto's form with specks of dark green. Chibiusa had blue, pink and white chakra swirling around her, and Hadaru had purple, dark purple, blue and black chakra swirling around her. Stop, Naruto shouted, and they all stopped concentrating and looked at him with wide eyes at the power they felt coming from them. It seems like Senshi work differently than normal humans, he said, causing all three girls to look at him in confusion. What do you mean by that Naruto-kun? Makoto asked not noticing the changed suffix. Naruto noticed, but didn't say anything about it. The two girls turned to each other and grinned to each other with a plan in mind. What I mean is that people over the age of 14 who had never used chakra before is not able to ever use it without someone forcibly opening your chakra pathways, he paused to allow the girls to absorb what he just said and then continued. As I said before Senshi are not bound to this rule it seems. Bakoto you are about 15 and were able to access your chakra, but the strange thing is that you have two chakra sources. Chibiusa you have three and Yuhadaru have three as well. How this is possible I don't know, but I have clue for why Hadaru have four different sources, he said giving Hadaru a knowing look, and she adverted her eyes to the ground to avoid his look. 
Jibiusa gave her friend a concerned glance, and Makoto gave her a glance as well. And why do Hadaru have four chakra sources Naruto-sensei? Chibiusa asked shifting her gaze from Hadaru and Naruto almost constantly. It isn't for me to tell Chibiusa, he said casting another look over to Hadaru. But the good news is that all of you have at least over Chunin level chakra. Well Hadaru, you have high Chunin, and Makoto you have mid Chunin and Chibiusa you have low Chunin, but without the proper control all of your power will be useless, he said as he looked at them each with a serious gaze. I will now show you the hand seals for the jutsu I had showed you earlier. Once you got it down, I will teach you the first chakra control exercise I was taught. Tree climbing, he said with a big smile one Makoto and Chibiusa instantly recognizes as one that Yusagi usually gives, right before she does something devious. How will tree climbing help us learn how to control out chakra Naruto? Makoto asked with a raised eyebrow with a look of disbelief. I already know how to climb trees Naruto-sensei, Hadaru said with a skeptical look on her face. I have to agree with her sensei, Chibiusa said agreeing with Hadaru. Naruto just tilted his head slightly and walked over to a tree. The girls watched as he continued walking towards the tree until he slowly placed his foot on it and walked calmly up it. He walked to the first branch and sat on it and then looked down at the gapping girls. Like I said before, once you learn the first jutsu ah never mind. I think you all should learn the proper control first before you attempt to learn the jutsu. This way you won't waste any extra energy while trying to perform jutsu or your special attacks, he said while throwing the Micha kunai. I want you to put your hand in this seal and mark your progress with the kunai. To put it simply when you're about to fall off mark your position with the kunai. And here's a hint to the exercise. Too little chakra and you'll fall off too much and you end up blasting off of the tree, he explained while jumping off the tree and back on the ground in front of the three girls. And remember the faster you complete the task, the faster you can learn that fire jutsu I just showed you, he said, and immediately the girls ran to the trees while Chibiusa and Hadaru did, Makoto stayed back to talk to Naruto. Naruto, those weights the girls are using do you think that I she didn't get to finish because Naruto interrupted her. You want some as well right? He asked and Makoto nodded her head. Naruto placed his hands on Makoto's wrist and focus on QP's power. Once he felt the dark sensation every time he pulls on QP's chakra, he makes it wrap around Makoto wrist, and it formed red wristbands. He then repeated the process with her ankles, and set the weights to 15 pounds each. She then immediately collapsed to her knees with her teeth gritted. Don't worry about me Naruto. I should be to my feet in about an hour or so, she said with sweat pouring down her face. Naruto just shook his head and walked up to his pond and jumped into the middle of it. He took a meditative position and slowly leaked his chakra into the water and tried to raise it by using his chakra alone. It's going to take me forever to learn how to manipulate the elements Naruto thought as he tried to manipulate the water. Three hours later. During their three hours of training Hadaru and Chibiusa both had made it to the top of their respected trees and were told to run up and down them 30 times. They were now letting their reserves fill back up and were both talking to each other while sitting down next to each other below Chibiusa's tree. Like Makoto had predicted she had gotten used to her weights in exactly one hour and end up making it up halfway up the tree on her fifth try. She was now resting on a branch near the top of the tree and had been resting for the past 30 minutes. Naruto has been sitting in the pond for two hours trying to raise the water with his chakra and only managed to lift two inches of it above the surface. Then he spent his last hour sparring with over a thousand clones and half of them were infused with QP's power. Now he was lying on his back staring at the clouds as they went by, and he couldn't help but think that he now understood why Shikamaru watched clouds all the time. He sighed to himself and sat up and called the girls over. He watched as Makoto gracefully jumped out of her tree and onto a lower one, then connected her feet to it and ran down it. He smiled as he watched running down the tree with sweat running down her face and couldn't help but think how good she looked with her face and body covered in sweat. Unfortunate for him Chibiusa and Hadaru saw him staring and decided to have a little fun more like Chibiusa having fun and Hadaru just tagging along for the ride. I wonder what Makoto-chan thinks of Sensei Hadaru-chan. Chibiusa asked with her back to Naruto so he couldn't see her smirk. Hadaru tilted her head a bit and spoke in monotone while keeping her face blank. I don't know, but I think we should ask her. Since he obviously thinks she's attractive, she said with a shrug causing Naruto to blush lightly. I mean sensei is a guy and you know how guys get when they see a beautiful woman, she said with a raised eyebrow while laughing on the inside. Yeah, do you think he would try to get Makoto-chan to be his, she said, raising her pinky to Hadaru in a suggestive manner. Naruto blush grew a little deeper, and Shibiusa had one last thing to say before Makoto approached them. You never know if it does happen. He may just get her to stay with him for the night, and well you know what may happen then right? She said with an impish grin on her face. They will have sex, she said giggling and Hadaru joined with her. 
Naruto's face was now imitating a perfectly grown tomato, and Makoto had just appeared staring at the giggling girls, then at the madly blushing Naruto. She raised an eyebrow and was about to ask what was going on, when Naruto just shook his head no and not to ask. Once he got his blushing face down, he gave both Chibiusa and Hotair a hard glare. Alright now it's time for me to teach you three the Gakaku no Jutsu, and these are the hand seals, he said as he showed them the required hand seals for the Jutsu. Once you three learn the Jutsu, we're going to go out and get some food, he said with some drool forming at the corners of his mouth, but he quickly wiped it away. Bakodo, Chibiusa, and Hadaru all saw what just happened and slightly sweat dropped. They then pushed Naruto's weirdness out of their mind and got started on the Jutsu Naruto had showed them. The three girls separated themselves from each other and got to work. Hadaru went through the seals while focusing her chakra through each seal. Pain. Gakaku no Jutsu, she shouted shooting a medium-sized fireball from her mouth into the sky. She frowned because it wasn't nearly as big as Naruto's and focused more chakra into the Jutsu and tried it again. This time she got a fireball that was the size of a small house and she smiled at her success and continued practicing. Tibiusa tried doing the attack herself and got a fireball roughly the size of her body before it suddenly exploded in her face, sending her back a few feet. Okay not enough control, she said as she went through the seals again, while molding her chakra carefully. Pain. Gakaku no Jutsu, she shouted shooting off a fireball large enough that it would even make Sasuke proud. She smiled and continued to shoot fireball after fireball from her mouth. Makoto watched Chibiusa as she fired fireballs like crazy and couldn't help but think that the younger girl may just be a pyromaniac, she shook her head and went though the seals for the Jutsu. Pain. Gakaku no Jutsu, she shouted as a fireball twice the size of her body shot out of her mouth. She grinned to herself thinking that wasn't bad for her first try and continued practicing. Naruto watched all of this with a smile, before going through a few hand seals working on another Jutsu that he had yet to master. Pain. Hausenka, he shouted shooting multiple fireballs from his mouth directly at the three training logs, completely scorching them. He grinned at continued doing the fire jutsu, and with the level he's at now. He only needs at least another week of training before he can hide shuriken in the flames of his jutsu. Until then, he just has to keep practicing, and then he would be at an acceptable level, and then he would move to the advanced stage. One hour later. Naruto, Makoto, Chibiusa, and Hader were all walking through the city to find a place to eat. Naruto knew exactly where they were going because he had eaten there many times before. His then gave a big smile when he saw the familiar restaurant and turned around gave the three girls the nice guy pose, while smiling a big smile. Welcome to Najiko's where they sell the best ramen, dango, and sake in the world, he said with a big smile on his face, with drool pouring out of his mouth like a river. He quickly ran into the shop and ordered himself five bowls of ramen right off the back. This surprised and disgusted Makoto and Hadaru, but what disgusted them even more was when Chibiusa ordered the same amount of ramen as Naruto just did and began stuffing her face with it in insane speeds. When Makoto and Hadaru blinked they saw that both Naruto and Chibiusa were already done with their first two bowls and was just starting on their third. I wonder if those two are related to Usagi. They sure can eat fast. I wonder if Naruto could pay for all the food he and Chibiusa are eating and not to mention Makoto-san and I. Thought both Makoto and Hader respectively, then they both took a seat next to the two bottomless pits and ordered themselves some dango and a single bowl of ramen. By the time Makoto took a bit out of one of her dangos, both Chibiusa and Naruto were already on their fifth bowl of ramen, causing Makoto to blink and shake her head. Thirty minutes later they were done with their meals. Naruto had twenty bowls of ramen, while Chibiusa had fifteen. Both Makoto and Hader only had two bowls of ramen with three plates of dango. Ajiko the food was great as always, Naruto said with a big goofy smile. Thanks kid you're always good for business with that bottomless pit you call a stomach, the blue-haired woman said with a laugh while leaning on the counter and turns to the content-looking Chibiusa. And this girl could pass off as your sister with the way she eats, she smiling a mischievous smile, while Chibiusa blushed in embarrassment. But I like her. Anybody who has an appetite like you two are always welcome here and I would hate to lose such a cutie as a great customer. So visit often will ya, she said as she gave a wink towards the blushing Naruto and earned a glare from Makoto, but she just laughed and asked for the money for the food. When Naruto saw how much he had to pay he paled and pulled out his super fat Gamachan, who looked to be crying crocodile tears along with Naruto. When Naruto paid Najiko the money he owed, Gamachan was almost completely empty and was crying just as hard as Naruto. Najiko waved as Naruto, Chibiusa, Hadaru and Makoto all left the small restaurant with Makoto comforting a weeping Naruto over his now skinny Gamachan. After that little episode we find the group of four walking towards the Crown Arcade, looking for Yusagi and the others. 
Moments before they got to the door a dark presence washed over Naruto's and Makoto's senses, and acting on instinct alone, they both grabbed Chibiusa and Hotaru and jumped out of the way of a dark energy blast that hit the door, making it explode into a pile of rubble. They turned their head to the source and saw a teen wearing black and red armor with a red cape swing in the wind. He had two swords strapped to his waist, and his hand was outstretched crackling with dark energy. He had shoulder-length brown hair with piercing purplish black eyes that stared down at Naruto with disgust and hatred. It's so good to see you again. Haku Aujasama, the teen said in disgust clear in his voice and spat out the name Haku like it was venom burning his tongue. Who the hell is this Haku? And why the hell did you attack us? Naruto shouted as he felt unwanted emotions go through him as he heard that name. He felt happiness, recognition, fear, and most of all confusion as why he was feeling all of those emotions in the first place when it was just a name. Sure he remembered Haku, the girly boy who was Abusa's comrade in the Nami no Kuni mission, but that was it. Yeah Haku was the reason why he now protect all of his precious people and was one of the reasons he came up with his Nindo, but hearing that name shouldn't make him feel like he does. So you don't remember me? He asked with his frown deepening. I was your best friend back during the Silver Millennium, he said causing Makoto gasp and having the teen turns to Makoto and he raises an eyebrow. Even after a thousand years had passed and you're still hanging with the Jupiter Chika he said causing both Naruto and Makoto to narrow their eyes at him. They watched as the teen turned his attention to Hotaru before he scoffed. And you even have the little Saturn girl with you. I'm not surprised that she's actually with you. I mean back in the day you two were inseparable. Just like you was with that blonde girl, but she disappeared one day right? He said laughing while Naruto was flexing his hands that were changing to claws slowly. Yes you and the Saturn girl were inseparable before those senshi who guard the edges of the solar system put her to sleep. I remember them saying something stupid like she's a danger to both you, your sister and everyone in the entire galaxy Haku Aujisama. I can't believe you had them as your guardians, he said with a laugh, while oblivious to the red chakra leaking out of Naruto. What's this shit you talking about? And you never told me who you were, Naruto said close to growling and tried his best to control his raging emotions. Hotter's eyes had narrowed dangerously during the mysterious teen's little monologue, and she had black and purple chakra leaking through her body. Bakoto had also narrowed her eyes at the teen, and she was also angry and confused at what the teen had been saying. From what she heard it was obvious that Naruto was from the Silver Millennium and was called Haku in his past life. And if she heard correctly she was his friend along with Hotaru and some blonde girl. She would think that it would be Minako or Yusagi, but the boy had said that she had disappeared and she knew that both Yusagi or Princess Serenity and Minako had been sent to Earth by Queen Selenity to be reincarnated after the invasion by Beryl. And he said that Naruto had guardians like Yusagi had her guardians consisting of Sailor Mars, Mercury, Venus and herself Sailor Jupiter. Now Makoto may not be as smart as Ami, but she knew when something was obvious for all to see. So that means that Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune are Naruto's guardian senshi she thought shocked and was just noticing the red chakra leaking out of Naruto and the black and purple chakra leaking out of Hotaru. She wasn't the only one who notices this because Chibiusa was trying her best to calm them and that's when the teen spotted her. That hairstyle and those eyes of yours. It's clear to me that you're her child making you the future princess of Crystal Tokyo. Yes, now that all four of you or should I say seven of you are here. I can start with what I started over a thousand years ago, back in the Silver Millennium, the teen said with an evil smile on his face, just as Sailor Moon, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Neptune, Uranus and Tuxedo came and all came into view with various expressions on their faces. Sailor Moon, Mercury, Mars and Venus all had looks of anger, shock, hatred, and deep sorrow, all etched into their faces in that exact order. Uranus, Neptune and Tuxedo came and had emotionless faces on, but if you were to look into the eyes of both Neptune and Uranus, you would have seen the looks of regret and sorrow, before it was gone completely. Tuxedo came and said nothing, but he too felt a deep sorrow pass through him. And what job was that you prick? Naruto snarled as the whisker marks on his face deepened and his eyes changed into a feral red with his hair becoming wilder and it almost resembled fur. Hotaru's purple and black chakras were intertwining with each other before it changed into a purplish blue color and her hair became a little wild. To help my mater destroy those belonging to the royal families of the Silver Millennium, he said with a crazed laugh, making everyone there to narrow their eyes at him. And I will be starting with the Moon family like I had done before. But this time I will make sure you won't reincarnate Haku, he said laughing maniacally. Uranus having enough of this decided to cut down his little parade with a few choice words, but Sailor Moon cut her off before she got the chance to attack. How are you supposed to take down the royal families when you're only one person, she said in all seriousness with a heavy frown on her face. The teen looked at her with a raised eyebrow before recognition passed through him. 
Ah Serenity Ojisama it's also good to see you again, he said, causing Sailor Moon's eyes to glare at him. But to answer your question, you're right it is impossible for one person to destroy the royal families, this caused Sailor Moon to smile to herself along with some of the others, but Naruto, Uranus, Hotaru, Neptune, Venus, and Tuxedo Cayman all narrowed their eyes further at him. But not if you had millions of minions and comrades to help you. And besides I was only assigned to kill those of the Moon Royal family, but I did kill a little blonde girl from Venus back in the Silver Millennium, he said with a smirk causing Sailor Venus to glare at him in hatred and for more of QB's chakra to leak through Naruto's body. Sailor Moon and Chibiusa both glared hard at the teen. And as for my name you can call me. Ajiro, he said as he unsheathes his katana and points it up to the sky. Shadow demons rise, he said as the sun was suddenly covered by a dark energy, making it seem like it was nighttime. Then hundreds of shadows surrounding the area started gathering together and was slowly surrounding the Senshi and Naruto, Hotaru, Chibiusa, Tuxedo Kamen. Makoto had transformed the moment Ajiro had summoned his shadow demons. The gathered group of fighters watched as the shadows started taking forms. The shadows all grew to about six feet in height and had black wisp of smoke covering their bodies. The demons had horns sticking out of their heads and had emotionless yellow eyes. The demon's hairs were all different lengths that ranged from shoulder length to mid-back, and they all seemed to be wearing all sort of different armors. The demons all had claws that all seemed sharp enough to cut through metal, and their fangs weren't making them feel any better. There were about 100 shadow demons in all, and they all glared at the group wanting to rip them to shreds, but waited for their orders. Shadow demons attack, Ajiro ordered, and as all the demons charged the group at once. Naruto knowing that the girls wouldn't be able to fight or run effectively with their weights on went through a few hand seals. Hi, Naruto shouted and the wristbands on Chibiusa's and Hotaru's bodies vanished, causing both girls to stand up straighter. Sailor Jupiter wrist and ankles just glowed red, and she also stood up straighter than before. The others saw this and decided to question her about it later. Hotaru knowing that she wouldn't be able to fight effectively without some help, decided to call upon her weapon, but a voice inside her head stopped her. Don't call the weapon yet Hotaru. It is still too early and the fight haven't even begun yet. Rely on your hand-to-hand -hand combat for now and I will tell you when it's the right time to call the side, Saturn explained in monotone, but on the inside her emotion were raging and she wanted to rip Ajiro to pieces. She knew she couldn't do that and decided to help Hotter while she fought in her first major battle. Alright Saturn. Maybe I can use the jutsu Naruto taught us earlier today she thought as she narrowly dodged the claw strike, one of the demons sent at her, and she countered by kicking the demon in its head, by focusing some of her chakra to her strike, sending the demon flying. She stared wide eyes at that along with a few others who saw it, but had no time to comment on it, as more and more demons attacked them. To not get caught in the horde of demons the fighters broke off in groups. Naruto went off with Hotaru and Sailor Moon. Chibiusa, Tuxedo Kamen and Sailor Mars was another group. Sailor Venus and Mercury was another, and the last group was Sailor Jupiter, Uranus and Neptune, with each having their own group of demons following them. Ajiro watched this with an amused expression and watched it all from his spot from on top of the store he was sitting on. Naruto's group. Naruto grabbed a kick at demon sent to his chest and threw him over to another demon sneaking up behind him while going through some hand seals. Pain. Kikaku no jutsu, he shouted as he shot a giant fireball from his mouth, burning the demons to ash. He saw a few more rushing him and went through some more hand seals. Pain. Hausenka, he cried as he shot multiple fireballs from his mouth and burnt the demons that were rushing him to ash. He turned around only to get kicked in the stomach, and then he felt himself getting punched in the face, making him crash into the ground. He quickly got back to his feet just in time to dodge a killing blow from a snarling demon. He rushed the demon and kicked it in, its face while grabbing onto the leg of another demon from the air, while giving it a flipping axe kick to its head sending it to the ground. He felt two demons coming from behind him and held out both of his hands, and two Rasengan formed in them. Right when they were about to make their strike he swiftly turns around and rammed the two chakra balls into the two demons chest destroying them on contact. Seeing more rushing him he takes out two kunai and charges them. Sailor Moon wasn't doing too well and none of her attacks had no effect on the demons at all. She felt hopeless and powerless and wondered what she was doing being Sailor Moon as she jumped over a claw strike from a demon. She didn't understand why she was so weak and why everyone else seemed so much stronger than her. What was her reason for fighting she wondered as she felt a claw go through her back, making her stumble a bit into a punch of another demon, sending her to her knees coughing up blood. What's my reason for fighting? She asked herself as she rolled out the way of the kick that would have taken her head off. To protect what's precious to me, a voice sounded through her mind as she kicked a demon in its head, making it stumble a bit. To protect what's precious to me she repeated in her mind as she ducked under another strike and kneed a demon in its head and kicking it in its chest sending it crashing into the ground. 
to make sure I protect those I love, the voice said growing stronger and in turn making Sailor Moon stronger as well. To make sure I protect those I love she thought as visions of her friends, Mamoru, her senshi, her family, Chibiusa, and her mother of her past life, appeared in her mind making her fight harder than before. To always be their light during their darkest time, the voice said voice growing even stronger, increasing Sailor Moon's strength even more as she dodged a strike that was meant to take her head off and delivered a jaw-shattering punch to the demon and kicked a nearby demon in its gut, making a double over in pain, before it was punched in its face, sending it crashing into a building. The always be their light during their darkest time she repeated as she swiftly dodged the rapid punches two demons were throwing at her, and to her, they were moving almost as slow as snails. She grabbed one of the demon's arms and threw it into four others knocking them down to the ground. Because I am. The voice said in a whisper, but still held power behind its words. Because I am Sailor Moon and Princess Serenity, heir to the Moon Kingdom, she declared, and she was covered in a bright light that blinded the area. When the light died down Sailor Moon stood there with a scepter in her hand, and her brooch changed from a circle shape into a red and gold brooch, shaped like a heart with a small golden crown at the top. She then looked down at her heart-shaped scepter and turns to the demons and pointed her scepter at them and said the first words that came to mind while twirling the scepter in her hand. Moon spiral heart attack, she shouted as she multiple heart beams shot out of her scepter and completely obliterated the demons before they got the chance to attack again. She gave off a big smile thinking about how powerful she had become, knowing that she would be able to protect her friends and precious people for a while longer with this new power. She then ran off and continued to fight the raging shadow demons. Unknown to her, the other senshi also received a power boost thanks to Sailor Moon gaining more strength. Adaru shakily dodged a strike aimed at her throat and jumped into the air, giving a spin kick to the demon's head with a chakra enforced hit. Just as she landed on the ground she was kicked from behind sending her crashing towards a tree. Seeing this Hadaru flipped in mid-air, and just as she touched the tree she applied chakra to her feet connecting directly to it. She let out a little sigh knowing if she hadn't caught herself she would be either unconscious in a lot of pain or crippled and still be in a lot of pain. Before she had any more to think about how much pain she would have been in if she hadn't landed on the tree, she saw a demon claw right through the tree sending her towards the ground. She flipped and landed on all fours just as she was surrounded by 20 demons. She gave off an impassive face to the demons, while on the inside she was quite scared at her situation. Now what do I do? Use the scythe now Hadaru, Saturn commanded, and not needing to be told twice she lifted her hand into the sky, and as she felt a rush of familiar dark energy flood through her body. That scythe, she said in a dark voice with a cold smirk appearing on her face, just as purple lighting shot out from the sky and right into Hadaru's hand, causing a cloud of smoke to cover her body from view. When the dust cleared, Hadari now stood with a scythe hoisted behind her back. The pole of the scythe was black, but it had ancient Saturian language engraved into it. The blade of the scythe was dark purple and had an eerie glow to it. It also had ancient Saturian language engraved into it. Hadari let out a chuckle before disappearing and reappearing behind the unexpected demons and beheaded five of them. She saw the demons look at her, then rushed her preparing to rip her to shreds. They were sadly mistaken when Hadaru once again disappeared and appeared in front of them and immediately sliced the demons in two before they even had a chance to blink. Hadaru didn't know how to explain it, she felt like she was invincible and could take out the whole herd of demons by herself. She felt her speed increase drastically along with her strength and she even knew how to use the scythe as if she had practiced with it her whole life. Sadly she could feel herself weakening considerably, and quickly, she didn't know how much longer her body would last, but she guessed she had a little under 5 minutes left before she passed out or died. Seeing more demons circling her she felt words pop into her head instantly and knew what she had to do. She placed the death scythe directly in front of her, and placed wiped her hand over the blade, making the eerie glow of the blade to shine a dark purple. She then placed her hand directly over the hand holding the scythe, and started spinning in place rapidly. If one were to look at the place hot air was currently at they would see nothing, but a huge purple cyclone that was cutting demons that surrounded it. The purple cyclone moved towards a large group of demons, and immediately a bloodbath commences. Demon arms and legs were flying everywhere, and literally a giant pond of blood was forming around the chopping cyclone, and no demon was spared from its wrath. Soon after two minutes of spinning the cyclone came to a stop, and when it died down there stood a panting hot air who had blood all over her body, and had a black shadow forming under her eyes. Her side was covered in blood and was steadily sucking the life force out of hot air's body. How did you demons like my death cyclone? She asked wearily and weakly. She then looked over at her side before words came to her mind once again. That side. Vanish, she said as she fell unconscious and right before she hit the ground, Naruto caught her and smiled gently at her. He then ran toward Sailor Moon, who was firing heart beams from her scepter at a horde of shadow demons, with hot air resting peacefully in his arms. 
He saw her drop down to one knee after finishing her attack. He rushed over to her and saw her struggling to get back to her feet. Need some help? Naruto asked her. She stared at him for a few seconds before nodding her head and giving him a small and weak smile. Naruto gently laid hot air on the ground and created a Kage Bunshin to take her someplace safe. The clone nodded its head and ran off. Once the clone was out of sight, Naruto helped Sailor Moon to her feet. Thanks Naruto, Sailor Moon said panting hard. No problem Sailor Moon, but we should go help the others now. Are you up to it? He asked stretching his arms. Sailor Moon smiled a big smile before nodding her head and took off in the direction where Chibiusa and her group were fighting at. Chibiusa's group. Chibiusa jumped over a demon's head and grabbed its long horns while doing it and threw it to a few demons while going through some hand seals. Pain. Gakaku no Jutsu, she shouted as she shot a large fireball from her mouth and burnt the demons to a crisp. Sailor Mars and Tuxedo came and saw this and were shocked and awed at what Chibiusa had just done. Where did she learn that? No better yet where can I learn that Mars thought as she narrowly dodges a kick sent at her by a demon and countered with a high kick, making the demon fly high into the air while focusing on her power. Burning Mandala, she shouted as the attack hit the demon head on burning it to dust. I know Naruto is the one who taught Chibiusa that move. At least now she could protect herself from enemies Tuxedo came and thought as he threw a few roses into a demon, stunning it for a few seconds before batting it away with his staff. Well, well, well. It looks like the princess is in a little bind and is exhausted. I guess now I can finally finish you off, a voice sounded through the area. All fighting had stopped and everyone turned to a building to see Emerald and Kaolinite with ten heart snatchers with them, all with arrogant smirks on their faces. Emerald, Chibiusa hissed as she fell to one knee having used too much chakra in her attack and was now exhausted. She watched as Emerald summoned a ball of dark energy from her hand and shot it towards the barley standing girl. Her eyes widened in fear as the ball of death approached her. Sailor Mars and Tuxedo Cayman were too far away to reach Chibiusa in time and so was everyone else. Chibiusa stared at the dark energy ball with a look of fear and closed her eyes. She heard her friends and the senshi shouting at her to move out of the way. She even heard Naruto's desperate cries, and she smiled a sad smile as she thought of him. Gibiusa, Naruto shouted just as the ball approached her, but it never made contact. The ball was stopped by a white rose. Sailor Moon saw the rose and turns to Tuxedo Cayman, who had a shocked expression on his face. Sailor Moon and the other inner senshi recognizes the rose, but they didn't know how it would be possible, because Mamoru had his memories back, and there's no way that he should be here. Trying to kill a young girl, you are a foolish woman. Have you no shame at all? A voice commented. They all turned to a car to see a teen leaning against it with a white rose in between his fingers. He was dressed in white Arabian robes with a saber strapped to his waist. You could barely make out the teen's silver hair, and the teen's blue eyes were as cold as ice, as he stared calmly into Emerald's hate-filled eyes. No way, Mars said in disbelief. How is he here? Venus said as she walked past the now motionless shadow demons who were ordered to stop attacking, so Ajiro could see what was happening from his place on top of a building away from the others. There's no possible explanation for this, Sailor Mercury said as she also walked past the demon surrounding her. Isn't Tuxedo Cayman and him once in the same? Jupiter asked as she, Uranus and Neptune all ran over to the others. Naruto ran over to Chibiusa and bit his thumb and went through some hand seals. Fuchius no Jutsu, Naruto shouted as he summoned Gama once again wearing his samurai armor. Gama, carry Chibiusa over to where I placed Hotter-chan. Here he will show you the way, he said as he summoned another Kage Bunshin to guide the frog. Please protect them from any harm, he said, and the frog croaked in response and hopped off following the clone Naruto. The others watched him with shock expressions, but the teen wearing the Arabian clothes didn't even blink and continued to stare into the still glaring emerald. Who the hell are you? She snarled with black energy swirling around her. The teen chuckled, and the white rose disappeared from his hands with a flick of his wrist, as if it was never there. The teen pushed off the car and walked calmly past the others without even giving them a glance. He gave a smirk, and even though he knew they couldn't see it, he knew that they could feel it along with the power and confidence he was radiating. My name is. He said as he paused to build tension and to make things seem more dramatic. He felt everyone's eyes on him and let off a small chuckle. The Moonlight Knight. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you all are enjoyed this video. If you do please leave a like share and subscribe also don't forget to support author of this fanfic. So let's end this video here. Until then see you in next video.